Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, a very special edition of the Pat Mayo Experience. So I need all of you to smash the like to the episode, sub to Mayo Media Network. You should tell a friend while you're at it as well. And if you want the exclusive Cust Corner podcast feed on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, hit the description. All of the links to subscribe are down there right now. So strap yourself in and get ready for Cust Corner 47. Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. He's got the hottest takes with the highest stakes. He should be president of the United States. But it's Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. Cuss Corner. <laughs> Tell me about this again. How do you do it on your phone? So you scroll, you know, once the, the you're off your lock screen, uh, then you, you know, you, you, you scroll down with your finger the same way you would if you wanted to like see the tele the airplane and the flashlight and the calculator or whatever. But okay. I never noticed it until someone showed it to me. There's a little button there, which is like a square on top of a square. And that's called screen mirroring. Okay. You click the screen mirroring button. And then if your television is smart like mine is if your Wi-Fi data and its Wi-Fi data are on the same networks, you can click a button and boom, you can have on your television what you have on your phone. Now, I don't know, I haven't tried this yet, if what you see on your television you can see on your phone. Like if I'm watching cable TV on my television, I don't know if it works in reverse. I've never tried that, but I have done the phone to TV. I'm telling you, it is awesome. Okay, I, like I, now I understand why people have screen a Netflix mirroring. app. Screen yeah, mirroring. Screen mirroring. Now I can understand why someone would have the Netflix app on their phone. It never made any sense to me before, but now I get it because you can just click a button and then mirror your phone and watch it on the television. It's, and if it's I'm really like bootlegging, genius. if I'm bootlegging a stream on my phone, I can put that on my TV. As I understand it, everything that is on the screen of your telephone. Goes from like you know like the when Willy Wonka how they were able to turn the to the TV machine they could turn big things into little things you know by transporting it like the big chocolate bar turns into a little one so it's like the reverse here where you turn the little things into the big things through the it's it, I'm telling you folks for those of you who don't know about it I didn't know about it till recently someone showed it to me the other night it has been rev revelatory. Because we're not going to have the TV shows that we want to watch through the week on, on network cable. This is a way for you to get through this strike. Okay, so, so I thoroughly encourage you to do this. I, is this new? Because I've never heard of this. I didn't know of it either. Who a friend of ours, team? A friend of ours on Friday evening, we, we were chatting. And I was talking about how, you know, I have tech problems, as everybody knows. And he's like, well, do you know about screen mirroring? And I you know, was like, no, what in the name of God is that? And uh, took me through it step by step. I was able to figure it. it was, and then I had to go home when I went home and tried it. It sure enough, it worked. Like it's really tech usually never works easily for me. There's always hoops to jump through and problems and anxieties. This is so easy. So I, I encourage you, the people. This is t you know, as a man of the people for the people. I'm giving you a tip to make your lives easier. When you want to relax after a hard day at work or whatever, mirror your phone to your television and you have better sound, picture, everything. Uh, I think it's a really cool idea. You know when we've gotten together for those drafts that we do for the fantasy footballs every year and we project the Excel sheet onto the screen, Tim? What do you think we use? Yeah, I don't, I don't I, I have no idea. You just thought that was magic? I don't know. I don't know if you're using the fire stick or what you're using. I have no idea. I don't so, know how that works. So two things here. What year, Jeff, would you say that screen mirroring from your iPhone or whatever mobile device has been available since? I don't know, but it was available like when I was working, when I met you. Like in, yes. I was you're using right. that technology back There's in no the way it was that old. 2012. Because we used to use it at the office all the time from our phones. Yeah. <laughs> You're, see, you're over I a decade. Feel like I would have not, not, I not only this. are you a decade late on screen mirroring with your fucking hot tips. Additionally, everything that you're talking about, I guess outside of TikTok, 
Like, if you want to watch TV, whether it be on, I mean, you can watch it on whatever your cable system is. They have an app. You can watch it on Max. They have an app. Paramount Plus, they have an app. Netflix, they have an app. Why wouldn't you just use the app instead of streaming it from your phone? Well, you can just use your phone, though, this way. But you don't have but to why? use your phone this way. It's you can just easier you... for me to navigate the phone. You can't use your no, TV? No, they have apps on the TV. There's, there's buttons. Yeah, but those are They're... not easy to use. Cuz corner. <laughs> Tim, will you ever make a call for us? I said I will make a call if I don't have to put the person on speaker. Why? I don't understand that part of it. Because that's the only way that you can confirm that you're doing it. Well, then on Sunday nights, you would know because you could dial the phone for me in hand. Yeah, but Sunday is live. He's explained this to you. What don't you get? It is way more... Taking that call live is way more um, invasive than... Him hearing the call and editing it properly where we block out the voice in an address. I'd be happy to record it at the studio then where he could block it out. You're if, watching a full day of football. He doesn't want to make a vignette for you. You know what? I guess it's not going to happen. It's fine. Yeah, but so, dude, like, it's not. You're Wait. being so difficult because you're afraid. Yeah. yeah. Glove guy could watch this show and like show up to your house because you're going to have to. Yeah, you'll have to say your, your address. address on air. You realize that, right? If we do no, it live. Yes, you will. I would order pickup. What's that? Order it for pickup. Oh, I see. You're going to order it for... Okay, then yes, we will do that live on the show then. Order it for pickup. So yeah, you're inconveniencing on yourself more. No, I almost, I almost, almost, always, always order for pickup. Well, it Why? depends. If you're out and about and you're going home, sure. But what do you mean you always order pickup? 99% of the time, if I order, I order for pickup. Well, you, but, you, but, but, you can't, but you can't order a pickup. You can't make a phone call. But I have, in the past, had to do it and, or order online if, I could, if the app is easy to navigate. Like but Doesn't that require extra elevator rides for you? It's annoying. But at the same time, I would rather be the person going to get my food. Rather than give someone my address and have to wait for when they show up, and then there's the anxiety of sitting around here. Someone my like, I can't, you can't use the washroom right now because what if somebody knocks on the door? I can't, what? you know, do this. Someone would knock on the door. I, I, there's all kinds of things I feel like I'm restricted by until that person shows up. And so to have control of the situation, I need to go out to, to get that stuff so that I uh, am in charge here, not the person who's coming. It's not like it's their fault. I don't know when they're coming. If I need to use the washroom, I can't very well start using the washroom and then the door gets knocked on. Or, you know, I can't take a shower. I feel like I need to take a shower for some reason or start some laundry because I'm not going to be in the middle of a laundry run while somebody knocks on my door you have, or you have laundry. You, you, hold on. You have laundry in your suite. But, like, I don't like want to start, to start the laundry. It takes me, like, a few minutes to sort everything out of my basket and you know, make you, sure you, I put You know, you could, stop, you could stop and answer the door, right? You could go back to that. I right? don't want to do that. I don't, I don't. I don't. When I start, I want to start it. And I want to see it through. Sort of thing. I, I don't want to. Start. I, I'm. I, I'm trying to figure out whether this is real or you're just fucking so cheap you won't pay a delivery fee. <laughs> no, it's I, not think just that, I think that. I think that it's not I just. It's not just that. No, it's not because the, the other because the, the other reasons the other reasons that you have given are completely fucking insane. <laughs> I mean, I also don't like a delivery fee. I will admit that. I have a <laughs> problem admitting that. But I, it also, I feel like if once you put an order and someone's coming to your house, you are limited in the things you can do until they show up to your house. But you don't do anything. You need to be available. You need to be available for the call. Like I, I like, I would like not want my mother to call me on the phone because if she called, I'd say, "I'm sorry, I can't talk right now." There's a <laughs> I, honestly, heavens, that's what I would say because I would not want to have to break up the conversation unnaturally because someone knocked on the door. Or leave her on speaker while I'm ordering the pizza, because like once the pizza gets here, it's game time. I'm going to eat, so I, I would like not like not want to answer my phone and not want to get into a text conversation that I'd have to break stride on, or any number of things. I would rather just text conversation. Yeah, but I need to go get text conversation. I'm sorry. I, I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way. Yeah, I'm, gee, I'm, sh- I'm sure they do. I want to hear from the people who agree with Tim on this one, please. I, I need to hear to see. There's, I, I, there's got to be other people out there, and you can go to them, get to the non-alcoholic bar, and have the best time ever, and never order anything because it's too stressful to do. But this, when the weather's th- really, really bad, like it's a snowstorm, then fine. <laughs> then I don't want to go out. And- In summary, you basically just said I am incapable 
of multitasking. <laughs> well, it's just I want to make sure that when that person comes, I am able to conduct the transaction you right make away. It sound like if you order food, you wait by the front door in a straight jacket. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like. I'm paying my full attention to making sure I'm available for the call and be able to get there. Anyway, anyway, why, I just feel like why don't you I, just have them leave it? Why, 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 why don't you do what every other by. person alive does and just have them leave it outside your door? No, why? That, I, how am I going to pay them? Because you've already paid. No, I don't do that. I pay at the door. Why do you make? <laughs> I'm putting my card information in the internet like that. On their tel- on their website? <laughs> no, thank you. I'm not doing that. I'll pay when they arrive. I usually I, use cash on. I want us to be- go to a cashless society just so you have to put your credit card online. I don't want to do it. Imagine not paying with your credit card and getting the points. I can pay with the credit card at the door. You don't. I have. You don't. But I, it's very rare that I order in. I'd rather go out. It's also something for me to do. But you just said you had tons of things to do. But going out to pick up pickup is something to do? Yes, I can put a podcast on. I'm, and then I'm in control of my schedule. No, I'm not against pickup. There's a lot of times I'll do pickup. But the scenarios that you have given here, you're afraid to call your mom when food's 20 minutes away? Like, she what calls. The fuck and has, is going and on? Hey, I'm sorry, I'll call you back. I got food coming. <laughs> And 100% it, is what I expect. And she takes that as like, well, that's a very normal thing to do. I don't know. Yeah, but she thinks the food's at the door. <laughs> or you're, like She doesn't know the food's still 15 minutes away and you can't talk to her. I, I don't know. I just I, I don't like to be on someone else's schedule if I can help it. I like I mean, this my own this is why you should be using one of the delivery apps, because then you can just see it on your phone where they are. It would make things way... This would solve all of your problems. I get it, but I also have no trouble, like... I don't have kids, so I understand why ordering in is far more convenient for you all. But I mean, it's just me. Ordering in is far oh, more convenient after- for everybody. You realize that, right? But there's a level of convenience. It's more convenient for you than me because there are far more encumbrances on you just getting up and getting in the car and going. There yeah, are but, more but, but don't, but don't I things. have more problems getting to the door to pay than you do? Yes, but the leaving think, of the Think house about the anxiety far- of that. You aren't feeling any anxiety. I'm aware that you're trying to mock me here. Yeah, you can just... I'm just saying, I think I'm taking a very reasonable position. A reasonable I'm position avoiding... that you can't take a phone call when there's a delivery driver on the way to you? No. Because they might show well, up? Not... What, do you know about call they waiting? They might show up. When you called me that Uber that time, I went outside immediately and started waiting. <laughs> immediately, because I want to s- miss it. I sent you the link to track the f- car. Yeah, but I, you know, I just wanted to be outside and be ready. Anyway, I think a lot of more people to avoid costly fees and also to be in control of the situation. I, I'm more pro pick up the delivery when, when possible. How many people under the, the age of 70 bl- you think are afraid of putting their credit card details online these days? Like my mom know. is over 70 and she's she's got all of that all set up. Online banking, all of that. Yeah, because her life is so much more convenient. Yeah. They're not going to steal from you, Tim. There's lots of other people that they would prefer to steal off of that are probably considerably wealthier. Not that you're poor. I believe it. No, I believe it. What's that? Anyway. Tim can't go, can't can't do delivery. He might get an an email from a Nigerian prince. Yeah, but you'd be too cheap to give him the money anyway. So what's the difference? (laughs) You just say too cheap to do. Get delivery fees. That's easy. Not just to no. It's not just that. That Are is you, a like, you must be a dirt low ch- tipper too on delivery. Oh yeah, hundred percent. But like you're still keep, tipping on like 1984 standards, right? right? Gus is a keep the change kind of guy. It's 1884. It's a 20. You keep the change on that one, pal. Yeah, that's what I would do. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> you you're lucky. This is three hours into the show because you just lost. Some See, man of the people. perhaps, like Jeff uh, uh, mentioned the last time, perhaps the strategy is to hold back to the last 10 minutes when nobody's listening anyway. That's a good idea, actually. That is very savvy. Cuss corner. <laughs> In a lot of ways, I thought about going dark this week. 
Um, I've been told that these corners have done nothing but hurt my case uh, for an award that people very much want to vote for Jeff for. The voter fatigue is real. They really want to cast a ballot the other way. So I, I very much consider just saying, you know what, I'm just like one of those uh, high jumpers in the Olympics, just keep passing at certain levels uh, because it doesn't do me any good to jump at that level. But then I came across this story that's really cool that I wanted to talk about. And it looks like, but more as I did some research on it, several, there's a few places like this in the Western world. It's called a hangover free pub. And the conceit of the pub is that you go there and like you play darts, you play cards, you hang out, but there's no booze. Everything is non-alcoholic. So you don't have a hangover, you don't drink any alcohol, but you get to take in all the, the awesome parts of pub culture or pub life without the, 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 the drawbacks of alcohol. And there's places, in, it looks like in Canada, where they like infuse alcohol with antioxidants so the hangovers are next to impossible. There's a place in Winnipeg that uh, seems like it's a no-drink spot. There's places in Australia, maybe, that, that infuse it. It's not Canada. Anyway, there's... My point is there seems to be a, a burgeoning culture of alcohol-free pubs or alcohol-free bars so that there's no hangovers. Now, I think that's a brilliant idea. There's a lot of social science research to show that people thrive when they have what are called third spaces, not a sp somewhere other than work or home where they spend some time. And pubs can be that sort of thing. And without alcohol, I, I don't see what I, – I think it's a great idea. I'd like to see more of them. I think it sounds like a lot of fun. Sounds horrible. Yeah, it sounds like a terrible it's time. But if you're into that sort Doesn't... of thing, like I would rather go to a pub and drink. No, but the whole point is like the drinking is the worst part of it. So yeah, it's good but, for but, alcoholics, yeah. but it's shit for everyone else. Good for people who would like to spend some time in a space that isn't home or work, but aren't aren't either required. Let's or... go to a sports bar and turn the games off. <laughs> No, it would be going to a sports bar and turning the taps off. No, it would be turning the games off because some people have gambling problems. And we, the, they can't see that there's a football game on. But the per well, see, this is the distinction that people, that the first of many people, the purpose of going to a bar isn't to drink alcohol, but rather to be in that environment where they hang out with people. They play cards, they play darts, they go to the VLT, whatever. They're not there to drink <laughs> alcohol. Alcohol just kind of comes with the package. Is, is that like, is that still the thing people do? They, do you ever go to the bar? Yeah, that, this is what I'm, I, I don't understand this. When, wait, oh, hold on, sir. hold on. When did you go to the bar? When I was in, uh, in graduate school, we used to go out to a bar every single Thursday night. To drink any like wings. A pub style place. Yeah, like a pub style place. I think the idea of having a place where you can like hang out and play darts or pool or cards and uh, you know, drink non-alcoholic stuff and watch stuff on TV. Like I think that's the best of both worlds. It's pub culture, which I think is inherently social and good, and it removes the worst part of it, which is the drinking and the alcohol and the potential. Well, how do you think pub rock. culture gets to be fun and good? That's the whole thing well, here. You, you, every, you, well, you, you lubricate. Needs. Yeah, but the thing is, it, listen, I it, it's a fine idea. I bet you it's going to do very well. That's why we're seeing more and more of them. And there are a certain type of people that are really going to go for that. Pat Mayo is not a person who wants to go to this because I don't want to be around these types of people. Like, that, no, thank you. <laughs> well, it looks like yeah, Wales, Australia, Canada. These are places where there's a history of like pubs and pub culture, and I'm sure, and I'm sure that there are people that I like Jeff said, recovering alcoholics, people who saw alcoholism destroy their families. They don't like to drink; they're allergic to drinking, whatever it might be. This is a perfect place for them. I'm not one of those people. I can go to a bar and have a few drinks and go home. Yeah, and that's fine. But it's nice that the drinking has been taken out of the equation. Why but is that like, nice? It's not nice. I, I like drinking. I like drinking with my friends. I want we to have go a good to this time. Restaurant. <laughs> I'm fat. I if you put a hamburger with cheese and bacon on the menu, I'm gonna order it. So don't have that on the menu. Just have <laughs> salads and chicken breasts. So oh, I can't this, order this a hamburger. Sound, this is gonna sound crazy, but I'll tell you right now: if they could make a, like a fast food restaurant without the fast food, and you could hang out there, I would do <laughs> that. Oh my god! In a heartbeat. That would be great if I didn't have the pressures of like having to order the worst stuff or it being there and it was just like healthy foods 
uh, and water. Sort of you you realize that you're... are hanging out. The people that hang out at the fast food place. Yeah, I know the people. Not people to envy. I don't well, mean no. the people that eat there and like leave. They eat their meal. They relax. They go. They have their drink. They leave. I mean the people that hang out there. You don't yeah. want to envy that. Well, I envy the ability and the experience of hanging out there. I don't envy the sorts of problems that are attendant to that because of the foods you might consume or whatever. Like if you could remove the the burgers and the fries and et cetera from the equation and just have like a McDonald's experience where it wasn't McDonald's stuff. You like, want to be Norm at Cheers with the McDonald's staff. That would be great. Yes. But remove the fast food part. Remove the worst part of it. The worst part for you. Make it like social. And uh, if you're like me and after a hard day's work, you want to go out. You don't want to just stay home all day. You this work at home. home. You don't, you, you don't work a hard day. You're at home, like naked on your couch with a laptop. <laughs> that is not, not that. That's not true. Foolish. Like, that's I, not true. It wasn't. It's not like. Yeah, yeah. I, I, after your hard day of work of your two hundred steps, you got to go to McDonald's to socialize with all the winners. Socialize. He can keep his same medium fountain fountain soda cup and just just keep crushing refills as he's hanging out all day. My point is, I like the idea of places existing where you can take in all the cultural exp and social experience of it. But having removed the one thing about it that makes it really troublesome. Yeah, but the whole point of these places of why they're popular are the troublesome thing. Like no, you, what, you, all that's... these non-alcoholic bars are maybe they're fun and everything. They sound like a kid's rec center. You can go play darts really and you don't. can go play pool. Like that's what you do at those places. Next yeah. thing he's gonna say, he wants me to go to some club in Vegas without Molly. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should go to a club without that. I can't, because I'm a recovering Mollyaholic, Jeff. Because the last time I did it, I had to be peeled off the floor of a club. Never again, bad. Jeff. Never again. Cuss saw it. It was bad news. Yeah, it was not a, not a good scene for all involved. <laughs> uh, Paul, you were going to comment? I feel like these things already existed. Yeah, they do. Like they like, just don't call. They're, they're, they're alcoholic... not trying to emulate pub culture, though. Is the thing. They're just a place where you can play darts and pool and I, go do I, that. Yeah, like I'm looking. He was like an alcoholic. He was, you know, he was a he was a wild child in college, and and he's gotten clean and all of that. So like we go to like snakes and lattes where they have like board games and coffee. We do it because we poop. love him, not because like we would ever go there if it wasn't with him. But he can't really. But be wouldn't it be great to go? Like, this has been to around a forever. place. Wouldn't it be better to drink some Budweiser Zeros and Why would hang I out wanna... in a bar? What? So at this yeah. place, you're drinking like legitimate non-alcoholic beer instead of real beer? No. But that is an option. That is one of the options. Is there's non-alcoholic drinks there. I When you said non-alcoholic drinks, I assumed you had like, I don't know, DCs. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they have those too. But like these places have... You know, dr uh, alcohol-free drinks. This is like the most hipster millennial take I think you've ever had. I don't think it's anything hipster, but it like the place that I was looking at here in Wales has shelves with alcohol-free beer, wine, and ciders, along with hot and soft drinks. I mean, I I've never had non-alcoholic wine, but I assume it's worse than Jewish wine, which is awful. I couldn't imagine. Does Tim drinking like that. get this? Does Tim get these articles from some Facebook moms group? Like, it, yeah, like, honestly, do you, do you want to go and play darts at this place because, like, you can't beat anyone at a real pub that maybe the losers at this pub you can beat? I just think it sounds like fun. And Why, what, really is, what is fun about this place? And when you go to pub, I let me straight up ask you this. At any pub you've ever been to, have you ever played darts? Uh, no, but I have watched people <laughs> play darts. And it's part of the, what I'm saying is there is something extremely healthy about being able to socialize in a space that's outside of your house where the glue that's holding it together isn't a vice, like booze. Like okay, there's something there, like, there, there are tons of things you can do. You can go to the gym and socialize if you want. You can join a running sure. group and go exercise. We go golfing all the time. We never drink when we play our rounds. We got to drive none home. Of, none of these things are mutually exclusive. You're I, right. This place sounds horrible. I'd rather bed rot. 
Yeah, our bed rotting would be way better than this. I invite our friend. We can invite friends over. We just have a big bed rotting session. Be so great. You're in favor. So here I am promoting social activity, and you're on team anti-social activity. Well, I am a social person. You're not. You're anti-social. I like, I like to think of myself as a, a recovering anti-social person. I mean, you your idea, you're, I, you're, you're, a against, you're against bed rotting because it's just your everyday activity. No, it isn't. I'm someone who, appre- who, who is self-aware enough to know that left to my own devices, I would be antisocial. So I make an effort not to be antisocial. You're not self-aware with much, though. <laughs> yeah, that, that is a problem. <laughs> I'm not much self-aware. Do you know how many innuendos you made over and over and over last week without any idea that you were doing it? Yeah, but after the fact, I'm aware, and I was pathetic, and I acknowledged it. Like, I, 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 I'm actually, just, I thought this, 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 you, you guys would be really enthused about this idea. No, this, this, sounds like, like this, <laughs> this sounds like something like I would I have, have been super drink. pumped about when I was, like, 13. Yeah, sure. It's I just fun. think it's a good, fun idea. It's wholesome and it's social, and I think it's in a society where people are dropping out and you know spending less and less time together and in less social environments. This is an opportunity for people to spend time together and not have to be worried about like something like booze corrupting the whole experience. Like this, this when is booze cor- like? What's your problem with booze? I mean, like, it's not good. It's you- a problem. It's a social ill. It, yes, it can be enjoyed in moderation, but too often, particularly in bars, it is not. Yeah, it's the fun um, part about bars. A lot, and it leads to a lot of problems. So yes. here we're removing the one thing that's most problematic about pub culture, and I think that's a a, a Jim Dandy idea. A Jim Dandy idea. Are you going to join your fucking church group after this? Like, this sounds like the worst fucking time of all time, now that you've continued yeah, to talk about it. Like, the, like, it, like are you, you're either 90 years old or you're 13 years old. To enjoy, like, well, it's, like I need to go to this place to socialize because it's well, you're gonna meet Ned Flanders there. Also, oh, so what if there's some older people there? That's great if they don't feel comfortable or they feel intimidated in bars these days. This might be an outlet for them to. So, you this place you won already exists, it's called the Bingo Hall. Yeah, well, but Tim, okay. Tim's I, too intimidated would... to go to the Bingo Hall because calling bingo numbers is the toughest thing in the world, according but to Tim. It's a, glamour, it's a glamorous lifestyle, that's all. <laughs> Like, there are plenty of places that you can go that, I mean, you can just go to the pub and not drink. There's that. Yes, you can, and I can. I've been to pubs before and not drink. It doesn't bother me. But there are people for whom the siren call, I get it, like being at a fast food place and say, I'm not going to have that burger, and you you have it. Like I get there are people for whom that, that's a challenge. And so this like removes the social ill from the situation. You know, I'm not saying get rid of pubs. Have all the pubs you'd like. But I like the idea of having some non-boozy pubs where people can hang out and socialize and have fun and experience all the positives of pubs with absolutely none of the the drawbacks hangover free it's all the fun and none of the pain i i think it's great i i just don't see who would want to go hang out at these places that weren't like the world's biggest losers well i think that's sad that you think that that the idea that that if it doesn't, like, have there's alcohol. there's there's so many things that you can go do in the course that doesn't involve drinking that you can go congregate at, but you have to go to a place where historically drinking happens. And the only reason like playing pool and playing darts really is fun is because you're kind of boozed up when you're doing it. It's not like why don't you own a dart board? Why don't you own a pool I, table? I don't, but I know people who do. Do they play darts a ton? Uh, they play a moderate amount, I suppose. Probably because, you know, they like playing darts. Maybe they don't love to drink. Maybe they like to drink at home and play darts, but usually drinking and darts go together. Unless you're super serious, then you just have it at home. You don't need to go to some place where no one's drinking to go play darts. It's like a pastime to do while you're drinking. I don't know. My grandfather and grandmother had a dartboard in their basement, and so I would play with it when I was young. There's no booze there. That's how I learned how to play darts. It was fun. So your example of this is, I mean, how long ago did your grandparents die? Well, my, one of them passed away in 04. So 30 years ago. Not 30 years ago. It wasn't even 20 years ago. No, 30 years. You said when you were a kid. And you yeah, were doing Yeah, okay. This. Well, I was doing it. Yeah, so I was like a, like a, 
like 12. So your, so your example of this is almost 30, let's say 25 years ago that you did it. And that's the example that you're using. You weren't drinking then when you were rummaging around in your grandparents' fucking basement. And neither were they. Like, we're getting a field here. I don't know. I just think you can go to a, if you want to go do these things, you either own one or you're going to go to a regular bar and just not drink. Like this just seems like it's like going to a legion where there's no booze. It's fun. What? It's fun. It's fun to play cards or darts or pool. What was the last time? What was the last time you went to a legion to play cards? Have you ever done any of these fucking things? Or is it just hype? Or is this just like your New York Jets hypothetical Super Bowl that hypothetically this would be a great idea? Dad and I used to go to Legion on Friday nights somewhat frequently. You do? Dad and I used to go to the Legion on Friday nights somewhat frequently. Up until what age were you going? Uh, from like 19 to like 22, 23, 24. To, like to, quite a bit. To play cards at the Legion? We would play pool. We'd play cribbage. He'd drink. I wasn't interested in drinking. Uh, and just hang out. He was a Legion member. Still is a Legion member. Uh, yeah, it was nice. Okay. I liked it. All right, I, I guess this is perfect for you. I just, I, Jeff, do you have any interest in this? None of Jeff's it makes his, any sense. Jeff is on his phone checking out Ryder Cup matchups. None Paul? of it makes any sense to me. So you went to the Legion with your dad, and he drank there, and then you didn't drink. So it's like... And you drove him home. <laughs> yeah. Like, you guys still had fun. You did it for multiple years. It was Without a drinking. drinking establishment, but you made the choice not to drink. Why but I'm saying I didn't that drink. You're forcing your dad not to have fun. Like that's that's kind of your idea. I'm not. I'm no. I'm just saying there should be opportunities for people. There should be, and I like the idea that there are spaces where people get to enjoy all the fun of going out to the bar without actually any of the downside, which is the drinking and particularly the feeling ill because of it. Then don't get too booze and get hung over. Like some but of this is on some, people. That's a problem. But, but th- what is there are this some people fun about can't... bars outside of? Yeah, the, uh, that that's the whole thing that I'm circling back around to. What's the fun of the bar if you're not drinking? You I go, hate... you can go to, you can actually go do fun things. Going to the bar is for drinking. <laughs> it's not to play fucking pool. Go to a pool hall then. I guess I just see it differently. It just, I, I just don't get who would want to go to these unless you're a recovering alcoholic and you can't be around it. I think several people would. Obviously, they are. They're, they're staying in business, and they've been around for a few years, it looks like. So. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I'm sure that there's a lot of things that can stay in business that you know, a very small percentage of people go to. I just don't see how this would be a ton of fun. Like, can you I bet More on I don't there? think it would cost much to buy the business. I'll put it that way. <laughs> just go to a yeah, family just, restaurant. Just like, this is basically it. what you're doing. Yeah, yeah I'm de- I, no, I'm not demeaning it. I'm demeaning your enthusiasm for it. You should say, if you think this is a good idea, why don't you start one here? <laughs> I don't want to start one. I just want to be able to go to one on the odd occasion. We could all go to one. I wouldn't want to go by myself, necessarily. Why not? Would you rather go to a what? Legion Hall where everyone's shit-faced? Yeah. That was not my experience of the Legion Halls that I went to. That people weren't getting shit-faced? No. that They weren't getting, like in, like, hammered. Could your dad drive home afterwards? I think so. I did the driving usually, but I think so. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like this just seems like you could do all this at a bar anyway. Like you'd be re- like you'd be making a millennial hipster, like you like to say, statement about like I don't drink, I'm going to go do this. That's what it seems there's, like you're saying. There, there is such a thing as pub culture. Maybe it's more British than than you're comfortable with but there's a whole sub genre yeah th- because of the drinking the drinking is the pub culture part no the drinking is what led to pub culture but pub culture is a there is no, there f- is no pub culture without the drinking that's the whole thing you're gonna have a bunch of weirdos who are antisocial sitting around and there's no booze to get them going there's gonna be standing there on their phones and whatever place this is standing there i would do that too yeah i know (laughs) you would i know what you would do in pub culture (laughs) there's the camaraderie because people have a few drinks in them and they're just more willing to talk to other people and be loud and be everything like that it's more communal in that sense and people are a bit lubed up and they're ready to go ready to talk to whoever at this place like it's just gonna be people sitting there saying nothing i think it's a nice idea i'm pro it i'm gonna say start one see how it does 
I, I don't have the ingenuity or the effort. I can help you. Over I can help you business. with your business plan. We can get you a small business I bet loan. You could. Oh, I could. I just don't have the energy for it. So, yeah, is this just like you can't call a restaurant and make a takeout order? That you can't do this well, either? Well, if, if, if I'm uncomfortable with that, imagine how uncomfortable I would be running my own dry pub. Well, it does seem like, I mean, it seems like a bit of booze would actually help you in some of these social settings. Like going to a place without booze would be very problematic for you. I don't know. I don't really like to drink that much. Maybe that's the whole thing here, that you don't like to drink, so this sounds great for you. And people who like to drink would never go to one of these places. If I'm going to drink, I'd rather go to a craft beer place where I can enjoy like a flight of, of nice craft beers that are each like telling me a story about the flavors and instead of going to a pub to drink overpriced draft. Draft? You used to... <laughs> you used to call what you just said you preferred like pretentious and no one should do that. What I and we should just was, drink mass produced draft. No, I love I, mass I still like mass I still like like cans of coarse light. Oh, I so, love it. I love it. Don't get cans wrong, of Coors but, light, I love. Nothing wrong with cans of Coors light or Budweiser or Corona. I'm I'm still on board with those. So you, I used but, to say I, But why wouldn't you just go to a if if it's pub culture that like, hold on, if it's pub culture that you crave and you still like to drink beer, why wouldn't you just go to the pub and drink a can of Coors Light? I, I'm not even sure if I crave it. I just think it's a really nice idea for social harmony and, and development. Um, I think it's healthy for a society to have spaces where people can hang out as adults where there is no alcohol. There's Probably lots of places than... like these. You can go to church. And I think that's another very healthy way. I don't know but church tends to be more of a Sunday morning thing. It tends not to be uh, like a six o'clock after work thing. Are people like going out after work? Don't people have things to like go home to? Or this is just for like alone people? I don't know. But as more and more people are unmarried and more and more people don't have families, more and more people have nothing to do all night. And you think that this like playhouse would be perfect for them? I think it would be a healthy thing, yes. Is it going to have like an... Is, is this like the place that I bring my kids to that has like an indoor trampoline and a slide too? Stop it. You know what I'm talking about. This sound, but, what, that, but, that, a, but that's what it sounds like. No, it doesn't. It sounds like a pub that doesn't have alcohol. I, that's what it sounds just, like. It doesn't sound like a pub that doesn't have alcohol because pubs need to have alcohol. Well, they don't have to. Yes, they do. Or they're not really a it's, pub now, are they? It sounds well, like an arcade for 13-year-old birthdays. Yeah, party. yeah, that's... Not, I, it's, it's like I mean, Palladium. Because it's not like Palladium, because that's just arcade games and like well, okay, RC so, racing cars. Okay, sorry, it's it's Palladium with a pool table and a darts board. <laughs> but it's just those sorts of things, cars. Oh, great, so darts. it's so it's worse than Palladium. Why wouldn't you just go to it's Palladium? Like Grown-up stuff. Darts are great. You, the only time you said you ever played darts is when you were 12 years old. That's how I learned how to play darts. When's the last time you played darts? Uh, two New Year's Eves ago. No, no, he's literally described Dave and Buster's just no alcohol. You just go to Chuck E. Cheese, but like, <laughs> it would be kind of yeah, weird exactly. if you went by yourself. Like, bring somebody's kid. <laughs> like, go rent that a kid. That also sounds go incredibly rent, strange. Go rent a kid for a night. <laughs> I don't know. It's just strange. Oh, I, I went and got my haircut earlier. Um, and I, for whatever reason, I never schedule a, a haircut. I don't know why. Uh, I get them every two weeks. I should really be more on top of that. And have I like booked a, my next one as I'm having my current one. So I don't have to actually call to make a reservation. Some of us don't have as you know set of a schedule as you do. Uh, how often do you get your haircut? Every four weeks. Okay. You get it? Really? You're not growing up that fro anymore? No, I don't see a purpose. Okay, I see. All right, so I get mine done every two weeks, and I usually go to the place around my corner, although the, the lady that I had last time, I mean, I have the world's easiest haircut. It takes like six minutes. You do the two on the sides, you blend it in, or maybe even just do a four on the top, and don't even do a trim. Let's go two, four, blend, boom, we're done. Shave the neck, we're fine. But like when they use the razor, like they, they hit it off with the, the, the spiky comb, and this woman was just tearing my ears apart on it. So anyway, Ouch. I went around, and I wanted to go to a different place, so that wouldn't happen to me again, because my ears were all red for like two days. Uh, and the first two places I went to weren't doing walk-ins, because they were full of appointments. Apparently, everyone's getting haircuts today. And I went to this place that I thought was called Original Cuts. I just saw Original, and I saw the Barber's. What's the Barber's thing called? A pole? Is it just called a pole? 
I think it's called a barber's pole. Yeah. Is it called barber's pole? Anyway, so I saw that. I was like, perfect, Jeff. I'm going to go into this place. And I pulled up, and there was like hockey stuff on the door, like uh, old timey hockey players and stuff like that. I was like, okay, like, whatever for kids. I walk in, and there's like those old Rock'em Sock'em Don Cherry <laughs> video, like the cutouts of Don Cherry. There's like three of those in the place. There's <laughs> hockey memorabilia everywhere. And I sit down, I'm like, oh no, I know exactly what's going to happen. And I'm listening to the radio and it's the fan 590 that's on. I was like, I don't know anyone in Halifax who listens to this, but he's listening to it. And my guy, Jesse Rubinoff, who I went to broadcasting school with, is hosting the show that I'm listening to. And he, he looks at me, he goes, you a sports fan? I had to tell him no, because I didn't want to engage in it. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Wow. You yeah. like sports? No. No. I don't. I, I, I'm I sorry. Find... You should have said yes. He no. Only he, he brought he, he brought it Cricket. up three more times, and he really wanted to talk uh, hockey with me. And here's the thing: I talk for a living. Tim, you know me in my personal life. I don't like talking anymore. I don't like talking when I'm not on the show. I talk way too much when I'm on here. That I just kind of like to be quiet a lot of the times, and haircuts especially. Like I just don't want to converse. With the hairdresser, with the barber, I just want to sit there. But he just would not pick me up on any cues. He wanted to talk about fucking hockey with me. And you know how much I hate talking about hockey. <laughs> and it turns out the name of the place was Original Sixes when I went back outside and looked at it. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and, and, he finishes up. He's like, that'll be 20. Give me the Johnny Bauer, please. Yeah. <laughs> I, so, I finish up. And I walk up to the cash register and I look at the cash register and I'm like, oh no. The cash register looks like it's from like 1961. I just look at the guy's like, you only take cash, don't you? He goes, oh yeah. I was like, where's the closest place I can go get cash? And I had to go get cash and come back because they, they don't have any sort of technology in there. Funny, I was, at, I was getting lunch somewhere the other day and someone kept trying to pay with their card on their phone and the system just wouldn't take it and wouldn't take it and wouldn't take it. And I just couldn't help but think like, why you got to carry the cards? Can't trust the technology. Got to have the cards. Free meal. Uh, I get another person that had their card was able to swipe it. But I was like, if you didn't have your card, then you get a free meal. What are they going to do? Make you wash dishes. That's on you. Your technology failed. I guess. If your uh, your phones were, so it sounds like you could have had a free meal. Did you go get cash? Yeah, I had to go to the bank and get cash. More importantly, Jeffrey, would you have, or do you feel entitled to that free haircut? Because like that company's making enough money anyway. Oh, this, Look, guy, one, this guy was not making enough money. Six, I would, <laughs> I would support owner-operated small business. I would never, never take anything from. Go in there and say, give me the Stan Makita, please. <laughs> no, but let's just put it out there. But if I went into small business... Spent like eighty three dollars. Yeah, I think they should toss me a bag. Yeah. <laughs> so some small businesses you'll support, other ones that make barbecue you won't support. But he did continue to support them. His Not wife, his, his wife told him he couldn't. <laughs> no, that place is gone. I miss it so much. <laughs> like, why couldn't the guy just cook his barbecue and leave his vaccination? Like. Whether you're right or wrong, like just man, just we're here for the meat, bro. <laughs> oh, need that. So I, I mean, if you're only taking cash, how much? in like, I mean, Tim, you know about people who pay taxes and people who don't pay taxes. How much tax do you think he's not paying throughout the course of a year? If you're only taking cash. It's, it's very. I mean, it's perfectly legal, but yeah, I don't, I don't care for that one bit. It just seems very. Inconvenient. It's just an inconvenience. It's an inconvenience to your customers. Oh, absolutely. It's just really inconvenience to your customers. Most I mean, I, of the not even like I know some local places, burger joints, some like di- diners. They took it as far as they could without the cash, but pretty much in COVID, um, by I mean cash only, but pretty much in COVID, they all sort of succumbed to having to get a um, cash machine. free thing. Yeah, well, it's just you know, twenty twenty three. Come on now. Well, I would think with so many people, like Tim just mentioned, like I still have my card on me, uh, even though I tend to do like tap from my phone most of the time, that there's probably just a ton of people who only bring their tap with them. So they're probably getting a ton of runouts. People are like, yeah, I'm not paying. Sorry. See ya. <laughs> what are you going to do? 
I don't know. I mean, I guess it still is technically theft, but I understand the situation. Yeah, like, can they inform everything to follow you to the bank? No, of course not. No, so, if I mean, most reasonable people would go back and pay, like sensible people, but I'm sure there's a ton yes. of people that wouldn't at the same time. I am sure there is. Anyway, that's my haircut experience, so I need to find... I mean, I don't know how I feel about the cut, but it's better than that time, the first one that I got in Toronto when I inadvertently walked into Little Portugal and got my hair cut, and he gave me the Ronaldo, and I was like, oh, my, this, 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 does, this does not fit me at all. I don't need the, the fucking line shaved in my head like a goober. <laughs> Cuss corner. <laughs> so it's opening day, and uh, I want to wish a happy opening day to all those who are participating. I'm participating. The contest, yes. I, I saw that you're participating. They put and they put my drive through order number over one of the stickers to make it hard to pull off. That's a little annoying. I see Jeffrey has also played. No, I haven't played yet, but I got uh I didn't know if we were doing live pulls. We no, should. We should do live pulls. We are, because Paul I got Paul a Diet Coke as well, so he has some pulls to do as well on his. So I've already won big today. <laughs> I already won four thousand points in a poll, which is awesome. Um, I got some properties. I want a free small coffee. And so the way it works this year with the app is that not only do you have your, and you have to play the normal physical way with your properties, and that's how you redeem stuff, but there's a second chance uh, part. It's called the double play. And essentially what you do is you punch in your code on the piece into the app, into the spot where it goes, and you get a second chance to play. Now, every one of them so far for me was a chance to put your name into a draw. But the, here's the really cool part, is that there's like seven or eight different draws, and you get to pick which draw you want your name added into. So you got to do a little bit of game theory. You think, like, which ones will people most put their names in? Probably the one for the truck or for the, for the, the HBC $2,000 gift card. So I think the strategy, at least this is my strategy, is to apply for the lower ones with a better chance of hitting big rather than going for the high. Because I just would rather be one of 100,000 names being drawn than one out of 5 million names being drawn. And if you can't decide which one to be in, they even have a randomizer button that you can choose to randomly automate where your ballot goes. And so it's a lot of fun. And I won this morning and I'm on a heater. And I'm kind of wondering, I didn't want to do, I really promised myself and others, I wasn't going to do two a days. But I kind of feel like here on opening day, since I'm on a heater, uh, I was being egged on in our group chat to like, how can you let a heater go? Who walks away from the table after hitting blackjack three times in a row? Uh, I really feel like I should double up and, and go again. What does 4,000 McDonald's points actually get you? It gets you like a burger, get you uh, like a hot drink. I can it's, tell you right now, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's the equivalent, like large fries. That seems to be the best item yeah. you so, can so, get. So, 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 so far, you've won a large fries and you've won a small coffee, or you. That, so you that's won five bucks. It's you know, Jeff will tell you, four thousand points is the equivalence of like six or seven trips through. I don't so, know like that. that. Okay, well, that's what it is. It's the equivalence of like six or seven trips worth of points. That you've been given. So that's a pretty sweet hit. I'll take See, that. Pat, what that is, is he gets a large fry. That's just two more pulls for free. Hey, that's exactly dump it. The fries in the garbage. Not give them to someone in the store. Not give them to a homeless person. Just dump them. At, that's, them a, that's, the a, that's a free pull is what that is. Free spin. Free spins. Gus is one of free spins over here. It's like when he has his scratchers. And then he gets a free ticket of it. Just means he can go back and keep scratching again. So yeah, you, it doesn't seem like you won big. I'm not going to lie to you um, at all. And this year on the app, they're posting the names of people who are winning the prizes. So this is so what, now if I so, win prizes, I'll get my name there. Okay, <laughs> so this came up earlier on, and I think I actually tweeted this out, Jeff. I don't know if you saw it or not. Um, he tweeted out, or he texted us that this, he was jealous of this guy who was a big winner on the app, and the guy won twenty dollars <laughs> at Photo Prints plus a promo code. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. And I definitely know that Tim doesn't know what that is. Well, it looks like you put TV, you put photos on like stuff with it. But either way, I want it. I want to win. You want it? You, I guarantee you, you have to put in your credit card in order to claim this prize. 
I don't know that I do have to do that. You do, to, in order to get the photo prints. I guarantee you, you do. Well, neither here. Honestly, I just would like to have my name up there. Specifically, see, I'm the big winner more than anything else. Like, just like Craig B. from Grand Falls, Windsor, Newfoundland? Yes. This was at, like, I wanna... this was at yeah, it was... 8 o'clock in the morning you sent this to us. Yeah, it was the breakfast rush, opening day breakfast rush. Basically, I was... I, I was Arnold Palmer today, hitting that inaugural tee shot. Well, actually, that guy was, because he won before I got to play. But like, I was like getting things started. Uh, I had to go. Th- I went this morning because, like, you know, I had to, had to get something. Uh, and I, I'm a little nervous opening day because do they have all this stuff ready to roll? Are you going to get a hash brown without sticker on it? Because they 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 don't know yet. And as I think we've talked about, I don't know if you have on this show or not, whether we've just talked about it in our group. The hash brown is one of the plus EV plays for this competition because you get full poles on those, and they're like the cheapest thing that you can buy for a full pole. Isn't coffee so, the cheapest thing you can buy for full pole? No, I th- it no because there, there's no dollar coffees right now. I think it's hash browns, but coffees are close. Uh, and I Breakfast was right, is by the, the way is the best. I was right, by the way. All those coops that were out there, they all expired yesterday. It You're was such all... a savant. Thank you. I, 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 I sniffed it out. Like because a pig Pat, all, those, like for five months, he tweets at McDonald's Canada, replies to whatever their promotional tweets are, asking them when this is starting. No one ever tells him. And he, he's got his own way of like sifting through knowing their coupon schedule to know when it starts. He's incredible. I want to I want to know. I need to get prepared. Prepared like, for what? Last Eating? week, I well, you know, this may sound crazy, but last week I did what I like to call the farewell lap in that I went to places that weren't McDonald's for like a week, knowing that I can't go to any of do them. Do you eat healthier knowing you're pulling two a days for two weeks? For, well, no, I'm not doing two a days for a month. That is not happening. But you just said uh, you, you were going to. There's I, a there's a one hundred percent there's a one hundred percent chance you're going to McDonald's the moment we stop recording. <laughs> Maybe today, but <laughs> like not every day. But no, I did like a farewell lap last week of like going to places I can't go to for the next month because there's no stickers there. Like I said goodbye to Wendy's. I said goodbye to Subway. I said goodbye oh, to A and W. Yeah, I did like the farewell lap. It's like I won't be having you for a while. Even for a fat guy, this sounds like me. Like this sounds really pathetic. No, it doesn't. It does. It absolutely sounds pathetic. <laughs> yes, it does. No, Paul. it does. You're so Paul. Yes, you have something to say. So when Tim said this morning that he was going for coffee to break it out, like how many how many hash browns did you tag on to that? Because it is so plus EV. I got two hash browns. Oh, so it wasn't just because you're not even telling us the whole. How can He's we believe you with for anything? Coffee and well, you obviously had to be able to figure that out. Single day this month, you know it. You had to, you had to figure that out when I said that I had one properties in addition to the things I showed you. Like the math doesn't add up. So you're eating sixty hash browns this month? No, no, I'm not. Uh, today I had two hash browns and a coffee, which is not that much, by the way. If that's your breakfast, it's not that much. Yeah, but you're gonna do it tomorrow and the day after and the day after. No, and I'm pre- not gonna do it every. I'm not gonna do it every single day. Not every single day. So here's no. what he told us this morning, Jeff. He said, I certainly won't be doing two a days. So now he's already talking about two a days later on this evening for one thing. Because you were pushing, you you and, and our friend were, were basically egging me on to do it. All, well, I said, gotta... all I said was imagine stopping during the middle of a heater. And you, well, said, and, heater. and you said, quote, I already had this exact same thought. I nearly went through the drive through a second time when I saw that I won. I did. I almost, because I, I, I almost, uh, when I got out of the drive through of course, I had to pull right away to see where I was. And when I saw I had one big, I honest, and there was nobody really in line, I honest to God considered whipping through a second time. But then I just thought that would be extremely awkward and uncomfortable for me to, like, order from the box again with the same person and having to deal with the judgment that would come from that person seeing me whip through the drive through for twice in like five minutes, and I just was too self conscious to do that. I so hope one of your like friends wins, and you have to see it on the app. <laughs> Honestly, I would be fired up for them. Would you? If someone I know wins big, I'd be very excited. <laughs> I like when my friends succeed. I'd be very happy for them. Good for them. But they'd be stealing all your credit. Yeah, but you would know because you'd be like, I've gone fifteen times. Buddy goes once, and he's got his name on the board. That's how it works, though, right? You know, we all saw Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The people who buy all those chocolate bars don't win, and the kid that buys the one wins. Like, 
That's the way of the world. You know, all I know hold on, is hold on. I've know, already won. You know, that's not a documentary, right? Yes, I'm aware. <laughs> My only point really is I the thrill of the chase and these this new addition to the double of the double play is a lot of fun. Now, most importantly, I want to see the pulls. Let me see what you got. Oh, I, I think we should pull it and not even show them, Jeff. No, no. Let me know what you got. Boardwalk. Yeah, you know, I, is I that still the best one? Oh, no, it, 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 they're all places in Canada, so there's no boardwalk. Is, there's no boardwalks in Canada? Well, there are, but boardwalk is not on the... Is, there's no U.S. Monopoly properties on the board. Okay, I didn't get an Insta winner. I have Algonquin Park. It's a, oh, yellow, that's a yellow one. It's a yellow property. I could potentially win a snowblower <laughs> like I shovel yeah. my own driveway. How poor. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, look, if people had heated driveways, you know. Why don't, you get, to why, why don't you get your parents a heated driveway for Christmas? That seems very nice. No, I'm not going to do that. Um, why? Why aren't you going to do that? It seems like they deserve to do it. They're getting older now. Yeah. 2,000 points. 2,000 points. Sick. <laughs> Banff Island. Baffin Island. Signal Hill. Yeah, that's orange. I like you that you know. I like you know the whole board day one. <laughs> yeah, Miles, this, 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 Miles Canyon is red. It's purpley red, a pinky red. Um, yeah, I like that magenta red. Yeah, I have Peggy's okay. Cove. Not my first. Peggy's Cove is orange. Yes, uh, <laughs> d does that include the black rocks at Peggy's Cove that tourists like to walk on and die on? <sighs> People are so dumb. Paul, don't go on those Paul, rocks. All people. your friends, when they come into town to see you, you're new to the East Coast and out here, and like Peggy's Cove is about 45 minutes away from here. You got to tell the people, don't go on the Black Rocks. They always ask me like if I want to go, and I'm like, <laughs> I've went like three times. It's like, literally it's just a pile of rocks. That like, sucks. It's, it's a little like better now that they put that down new there on like windy roads. Like, yeah, you get they have the new real, observation real platform. Fast. It was a little nicer than it was, but yeah. How Once often are you going to Peggy's Cove? Do we, Not often. I was going to say, it seems like you know exactly what's going on down there. Like, I haven't been there I went there to check it out once. I, I went I, to check it out when they built the new platform, like, two years ago. That, that was such a that was a real big deal. You had to go see it. I was like, I hadn't been there in a dog's age. So I was like, I'll try it out. So now, save your coupons, because that digit code at the bottom is what you'll plug into the app to get your double play. And it'll also digitally create your board for you as well. If you'd like, Oh my God, you must be in heaven on the app. Oh yeah. I love it. This I'm is like the only app I know how to use. Right. Well, and well the how fact did, hold on. How did you figure out? How, how did you figure out how to use this app? I've had this app for three or four years. Okay. But how did you figure out how to use it? By using because it? when COVID, when COVID hit, was it, was it by, well, hold on, hold on. I, I don't care about COVID. I don't care how you got the app. How did you figure out how to use it? Well, I just had it and it's just, buttons that you push on the app now what do you think is different between this app and all other apps oh this app doesn't require any of my personal information outside of my name and my you need email. payment information well i don't pay i don't pay with this app <laughs> no, no, no 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 i order off the app i order no i don't order off the app i order through the drive-thru when they you know, oh and then my God. as soon as you go through the, the drive-thru they say to you do you have a McDonald's number? Obviously, lots of people are doing this, Jeff. Do you have it memorized? The Tell me you have it memorized. It, no, no. It's a different number every time. Oh. It's a different four-digit code every time you go through. Uh, <laughs> if you, you don't think I would have a four-digit number memorized if it was the same number every time? Please. I don't know. You uh, can't make no. a phone call. Anyway, so it's they ask you that every time you go through the, the drive through And I say yes, and I give them my code, whatever it is. And uh, then, yeah, then it just automatically uploads on your app like magic do you think it's actually magic like there's no scanning involved or any of that qr stuff like i just tell them my number and it just gets uploaded to the app it's super user friendly for so people like me can use it you realize all, this is all, a all apps are designed to be super user friendly it's like why all old people use ipads because they're super user friendly they're not complicated well, apps aren't complicated this one certainly isn't and this seems like it's going to be the best year ever. There are so many hot prizes out there. Yeah, you, what are but, the hot prizes? Hold on. What are the hot prizes? Well, as I mentioned, there's a truck. There is a a thousand dollar, a ten thousand dollar either 
gift for yourself or gift you can give to the Ronald McDonald Charity House in your name. So what would you get you for yourself? Pardon me? What would you get for yourself? Oh, I would give the money to charity no, if I wanted. No, That's the option. No, no, you have the option of either taking the money or letting them have it. Like, yeah. like so the you, you, would take, you would take the money. I'd, I'd give it to the charity. Why do you uh, have? Well, hold, hold on. I, I don't understand. I don't understand why anyone would give the money. The money is yours. McDonald's can fucking donate with their billions of dollars. Why do they have to take your you. money that you <laughs> want to donate it? <laughs> I just would feel. I'd feel good about that. Uh, what else? There is, you get a year of Paramount Plus, which on my app is CBS All Access, but it's the same thing. Um, there are Skip the Dishes cards, and I wouldn't use that. Uh, Michael's gift cards, and I wouldn't use that. Uh, vacation, you can win a vacation. You can get RBC, Hudson's Bay gift cards. There's cash prizes. Uh, there's an adventure stroller wagon. Well, don't need that. Uh, camping package that I could use the hands with the stove and the tent and the cooler and everything. Oh, hold <laughs> on a minute. Would that be like for you to give as a gift to someone so you wouldn't no, have to? If use I, it? are you kidding me? I would love nothing more than to pitch my tent and have my little campsite. And when people walk by, let them know I want it for free off of McDonald's on list. your front lawn. I no, am, like if I I am pitching a tent right now. Thinking about filming this as we go out. You camping by yourself. This is great. Let's do it. Oh, I would do it for the day just so that I could tell people that everything you see on this campsite, I won playing McDonald's Monopoly. What, what, what do you mean campsite? People we're, don't we're walk like, by real, real like, camping. Where, where did you get your tent from? Oh, I would tell them. Hey, you like this tent? I want it for free. Tim, Season. can I, I give you my credit card to put on your McDonald's account just so oh. I could see the purchases? I can tell you the purchases if you really want to know. But I don't understand why you don't buy through the app. No, I don't buy through the app. I drove through the drive-thru. Why would I buy through the app, Jeff? Because it's, it's the most convenient thing possible. But I also don't know what I want till I get there. What do you mean you, you don't, don't know have what to... you want? Well, particularly now, all the things I usually get are not stickery. Yeah, but you, so know, gotta... you know what has stickers, you know what doesn't, and you realize on the app, and you look at the menu, it's the same as looking at the board, right? Whatever. I just order when I get there. It's easier. It doesn't seem like it's easier. It seems like it takes longer. And Why would I wanna... you would get the special VIP privilege once you order off the app of cutting the line when you walk in. Well, I see, I have no interest in doing that. Why? You'd rather, you'd rather also, wait in it... the line? It also pegs me into which McDonald's I have to go to. Whereas when I leave the house, I don't know which one I'm going to right away. Not the one that next the to your house? the creepiest thing I've ever heard. That, the one no. two minutes from your front door? There's a, another one that's like six minutes and another one that's like 12 minutes and another one that's like 14 minutes. And I, I think you've got to, you gotta, you know, you got to spread the wealth. You got, particularly in a contest like this, you can't just go to one spot only. Because what if your spot is a dud? What if it's not? What if it's just continued? It's like that one slot machine just pumping out winners. Well, you know what? I, maybe I'll figure it out by seeing who's do, doing all the winning. Paul, what properties did Don't you think get I'm... on your poll? Yeah, what'd you get, Paul? I put a game to you. Did you? Yeah, they're probably underneath like your oh, book. Oh, yeah, they're right here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Montreal Airport. Oh, Trudeau Airport. He doesn't speak for me, Tim. And Peggy's Cove again. We already got dupes. <laughs> oh, wow. Already dupes. But again, put them Gosh, into man. the app. No. <laughs> fucking doing yes. that. I don't care. Keep well, for me for then. I'll the be there on. That were like, oh, I think like Monopoly is only a big thing in Canada. No, no. It's only a big thing for Tim. Yes. The rest of us actually don't, don't care. Don't care. This. <laughs> yeah. That's why we keep making, That's why we keep making it a segment because it's just weird. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's a huge deal. Like people, no one else was there this morning just because of pieces. I, you know what? That is absolutely not true. I got a call today from somebody saying to me that they went through the drive-through at McDonald's on purpose to get their coffee and will save me their stickers. Who was it? My father. <laughs> he gets it. He gets it. He knows how serious I take this time of year. Yeah, he's, he he's, he's, he's your father. He's doing it to support you. It doesn't sound like he would just be doing it. And he switches to McDonald's for the month for his coffee just to get the stickers. And all you do is root against his football team. Uh, when it's convenient for me. Which is all the time. 
No, well, it wasn't two weeks ago when they played Denver. To be fair. And he's going out of his way also think, to get you stickers. And you're like, fuck your, fuck the Dolphins, Dad. Thanks for being well, so nice. That's how I feel about the Dolphins. I can't apologize. The other thing I've decided this year is I've set my sights too big on trying to win one of the big mega prizes. I think I'll have more success if I focus on winning one of the smaller. You said this already, dude. Oh, yeah. did I? I don't remember. You're so funny. <laughs> I'm so excited. I don't know what I've said. Sorry. So how many times have you gone to McDonald's today? Just once. No, just we, don't, we, we don't believe once. you. Ever, it's just, Paul just instantly almost, from behind the camera lies. Paul, Paul's on to you. It's just once. It is almost certain to be twice today. Okay, but how much are you ordering? How many stickers are you getting? Like, you're getting dinner for two, right? Well, they don't have that app right now. But, but like, I mean, you're still going to buy dinner for two. You know, all is that ordering. combo meal number 69? Can no. you order McDonald's over the phone? No. no. I mean, I'll order a meal and I'll add something to it to get an extra set of stickers. Like, I might buy an extra DC or something to go with the meal. How much money have you put aside this year for McDonald's? I knew you're gonna. I knew you're gonna ask this question, and I've decided I'm not gonna just. I'm not gonna worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's just easier <laughs> that way. <laughs> What was the number that it's like you like what was the the number was so high that you're like I'd rather not think about it. So what number did you want to stop thinking of that? Yeah, uh, if, if it exceeds 500 at that point it becomes a little ludicrous. You budgeted a oh $1000 for it last year. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't come close. But you started a week late. Yeah, but I still didn't come close, Jeff. I think it was like $340 last year. What if we started a GoFundMe for you that people could donate to your quest no, to get I don't as want many that. stickers as possible? But the caveat is, like that movie, Super Size Me, that you actually had to eat all the food, too. So it's like a mixture of Brewster's Millions and Super Size Me? Exactly. But starring you. <laughs> no, I don't want that. I don't need that. Look, there may be stretches of days I don't go at all. Wrong. I've decided I'm not going to be obsessed about Wrong. it. Like, I'm going to go when I go, and I'm not going to go when I'm not going to go. Wrong. And I'm not going to let it dominate my but life. You go, but... like, after the gym now, right? This is what it does to you. Like, you leave the gym and go to McDonald's. That has happened. Because they're adjacent. That it's not is, my fault. That, that is something that McDonald's do do. They, they enjoy having. It was just like that Simpsons episode where Bart went and just ate the ice cream outside of the gym, licking it in front of the treadmill, in front of the people. Like They can tempt you, and they know that you do. There are people. I know it for sure, because you've mentioned this before, and I, I don't think it's just you. I think this is something you actually do have in common with a lot of people, that the reward for a good workout is to undo all the work you just did. Oh, I've done that many times. Yeah, I don't think you're alone on that. I think that's pretty common, actually. Yeah, like that. That's a that's a that's a, a reward. What so you, what you if, need to do, if, what you need to do, if you're gonna do that, and I think it depends on what you go and do. Like if you are going on a ten mile run or something like that, maybe you want to have like your carbs like an hour beforehand at McDonald's, then go burn them off. Let that give you the energy to stay through the run. Or if you go and lift, you can go and lift and take. Are you still using that pre-workout that our friend gave us that almost made your heart explode? The pre-workout? No. So he gave me this pre-workout stuff to take before I go to the gym. And I was vibrating when I would park my car. <laughs> like, my hands were shaking as if I had had 15 cups of espresso. And I drink a lot of caffeine. I was, like, so wired when I drank that stuff that I could have run through a wall. That's how wired that stuff. No, I felt like that stuff was going to give me heart failure, so I stopped taking it. That was probably a wise decision. Either way, you take your pre-workout or don't take anything, and you go and lift, and you get a good lift in. Then you go to McDonald's afterwards for the reward, but instead of getting fries, don't get fries. Just order, I don't know, whatever your favorite sandwich is there. What is your favorite sandwich at McDonald's? Well, my favorite one that can win a prize sure. is, is the Quarter Pounder. All right, so... How many pa patties are on a quarter pounder? Two? One. Is it just one on a quarter pounder? One big, pounder? one. One, big, yes, one, one big, big one? So order like three of those, get your stickers for three of them, chuck the buns, and just make it like a triple burger. And then you know, you're not eating as much bread. And then you're getting that That's protein really, from the workout. That's a really smart idea. 
I like this. That way you get your protein to help you recover your muscles from the big lift, but you're not getting all the extra stuff on top of it. But you're still getting more stickers. I like it. I'm, I'm on board. This is great. This is a good health segment. There you go. <laughs> Healthy tips with Pat about going to maximize your sticks and uh, cut down on your carbs during McDonald's. Yeah, how do you, McDonald's how, how do you balance? Yeah, how do you balance the sticks and the working out all all in one? I mean, you can tell them that you don't want. The, do they do that at McDonald's? You can tell them you don't want the bread. Oh, they don't care. Of you course, want, you on the that. app you could order it that way. Yeah, Paul, you or you, on the. Paul, 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 you have uh, you have celiac, so you can't eat the buns at McDonald's, right? Yeah, no, you can. They're pretty good about it. What, um, do they give you lettuce instead? Like on the machines, you can go no bun. Um, well, what comes you with can no tell bun? Them no bun. Or you can, yeah, or you can order it online with no bun. Like, what what comes easy. in place of no bun? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, like it's not a piece of lettuce, so like, like a to... burger without bread. So even better, just go do that. Just order three of those. I think this is a great idea, as long as they give me my stickers. <laughs> yeah, I would assume that they would. Yeah, I'd be concerned they might wrap all three patties together in one box. No, that's not how McDonald's does it, man. Okay. They better not, because I'd have to go back in, and it would be a scene. I don't, don't think you have be a friends scene. behind I think the counter? I, I They're think... there all the time. Yeah, not it there could be all. a scene, because they tend to put, they tend to put like the burger without bun in this like different tray. Well, you tell yeah. just tell them. You go to the drive-through. Like, You're not ordering from the app. You tell them what you want. You're like, hey, I still want my stickers for ordering the quarter pounder. Okay. She feels like I don't want to have these to like eat. little trays that could be problematic. Yeah, but if you tell them. Yeah. Like it's monopoly season, pal. Figure it out. It's true. Yeah, that's I mean that's that's literally the only reason I'm there. Yeah. I could choose anywhere else. There you go. So go do that after the gym. Get your protein in. You say that as if you're not there all the time. <laughs> no, but there are other no, I'm not there all the time. I'll go weeks without going there, bud. Because I, there's other options. Like I don't have to go there. I don't want the show to be three hours. Also, I want to talk about McDonald's Monopoly for 45 minutes. Oh, look, was there any doubt what we were going to talk about today? <laughs> it's opening was day. There any, you it's okay. And, the charges aren't playing. You got time to kill. <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, <laughs> it was, we'll st we'll still finish in under two hours now. <laughs> yeah, you both bought, brought props knowing, without me talking to you in advance, knowing what today's topic. No, you did to talk about. to us in advance. You told me specifically last week today was opening day. Oh, I, well, yes, you knew today was opening day, but I didn't say that's going to be the corner topic today. You just, you was, just knew. Yeah, man, I just took a wild guess. <laughs> I'm just excited. Like, this is the this might be the best year ever for the game. Like, it, it was always the best game going, but the, these new changes they made have actually made it really wicked, and I'm super excited. Made it really wicked? Who are you, my aunt? She's <laughs> she's like 50 and still rocks out. Things are wick and wicked. <laughs> Listen to you. <laughs> Wicked. Um, you know what? Those glasses don't look like some of Jeff's Rumble friends. I do. I, I mean, no, they have like the uh, Jeff's Rumble friends prefer to have like the 1997 center fielder for the Miami Marlins than the Florida Marlins glasses, like the, the ones that kind of can drop down like this, but are also angled at the same time. <laughs> yes. Yes, they do. <laughs> They also enjoy hats. And you know who doesn't enjoy a hat? Pat Mayo. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Cuss corner. <laughs> Jeff's multi-million dollar Thanksgiving brunch. <laughs> um, I was going to talk about... Okay. I don't need to hear from all of you people, and it's people on Twitter and in through text, that today is Prime Day and all the deals that I could be getting on Amazon... Uh, you know that I don't have the Prime accounts. You know I don't know how to do that. Why are you folks telling me about all these great deals when you know that, A, I have no ability to take advantage of them, and B, I'm not interested? So why are you telling me all about this? I don't understand it. Like, if you want to go buy your Christmas presents in October through a Prime or whatever, go do it. Have fun. Enjoy. But don't – what's the point of telling me about it? You, you, no one needs to know. Two things. One – your theme song was bought off of me to use in the Amazon commercial. So people are just associating you with Amazon Prime Days with do 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 Yeah, don't think I haven't noticed that. Demandacust. So there's that part of it. Number two, 
you come off like the cheapest person alive who's like a value hunter that, hey, here's some good deals, Top Cat. Maybe you should take advantage of them. But you know, the people sending me that know I don't have the access to the Prime. But, and yeah, but you have an assistant it. who orders things for you, right? Yes, I so do. So can't you just forward it to your assistant? I probably could, but I'm not going to go through all I, I don't have that, okay? I'll wait until Boxing Day to get my sales or till Black Friday because I'm a normal person. I don't need to be running around taking advantage of all the quote-unquote great deals on Prime right now. If you like them, great. Go for it. I'm not belittling them. That, that you enjoy, but it's not for me. And people sending me that, no, it's not for me. Yeah, but maybe they're trying they, to get me riled up. They're not, not trying to get. They're not paid. trying to get you riled up. They're saying, Tim, there's great deals out here. You can do this. It sounds like they're being supportive of you, but you don't want to take their support. You'd rather. You'd just rather be mad. It sounds like you're like these people after Trump was elected president, and they just couldn't get over the fact that Trump was elected, and they just decided mm -hmm. to be mad for four years. That's you with this. No, I don't think that's similar at all. Yeah, you're just people mad. Know that yeah. I don't have. Yeah, but you could. You. They think that you have the ability to download the Amazon app or go to amazon.com and sign up. They think that you have the potential to do that. I'm not they believe that. in you. Dude, it, that is the sort it. of attitude, turning down savings is the sort of attitude that's going to keep you out of those buffets, Tim. Well, you know, it, it, I somehow doubt my ability to attend one of those buffets hinges on my Amazon. I'm sure many of the attendees there have never personally been on Amazon either. I'm sure they have. Let, let, no, you, I bet you, they have. You realize, like, like rich people aren't like from the industrial like revolution age anymore. Like, they have phones and can like use Amazon. Their like personal that. shoppers have been on Amazon for them. <laughs> they have no. Known. In fact, at the club that you go to, uh, you can just get a personal shopper there to do your shopping for you while you're at the club. Correct, Jeff? Yeah, they've got all sorts of amenities. I'm not <laughs> familiar with that sort of stuff. Yes, you are. But yes, on your you own. Are. But on your own time. Listen, rich people don't like spending. You don't get, as Bill Gates in cartoon form once said, I don't get rich by writing checks. Like if you can just do it from your phone and you want some, just order it right away. Then, you, then there's no, I know there's like then there's no middleman. Card, I know there's like on-site card detailing. Oh, that'd while, be like, awesome. While you're on property. Fuck, I would love that. It's so, so like, hard. While you're on property, they'll take care of that for you and... That's my biggest gripe about not living in like a real city anymore where you can get like real things. Like... The people who would come and pick up my laundry, do my laundry, fold it, and deliver it back to me. That was great. That service doesn't exist here. That sucks. I really don't like oh, that. I thought, that's what the, I thought that's what the task rabbit was for. I mean, that's like a random person coming to your house. And to do whatever task you ask. They're not... Well, I don't know if laundry... Maybe laundry is... I never considered laundry to be on that list. Well, but if that's something well, you don't want to do... On, hold on, hold on. What... The fact that you brought up TaskRabbit, it's been a while since we've even mentioned TaskRabbit. What other things do you have written down or like in your head that you think that you would, if you could use the app, that you would hire someone to do for you? Oh, everything. Like what? Like take my car. Like, for example, I'm one of these people who never gets gas when they're supposed to. I always say I'll get it tomorrow. I'd love while I was working at home someday to just be able to have somebody just drive my car to the gas station, put gas in my car, and bring it back to me. That's something you would pay for someone to do. I mean, I would already pay for full service if it was available, so sure. Well, full service is two cents a liter. On TaskRabbit, you're probably looking at like 40 bucks for someone to do that. Okay, that's too much. Well, people don't just want to show up and do something for five bucks. Fair enough. But car detailing, I don't know. car detailing would be the biggest thing, Jeff, because I would love I would to love to have my, yeah, yeah I'd I, love my car. Because I, I, I don't like that I have to go drive it somewhere, make my appointment. They're always late with it. So I don't have the time just to like to sit there for two and a half hours and wait for them to like finally get to my car, do the full detailing and wait around. And then, you know, I have to Uber somewhere, go to my office, work for a bit, then Uber back. They could just come to my house, take my car like they would in Toronto or even when I lived in New Jersey, they would do this for me. That they could come, get my car, bring it to wherever they need to bring it to, to do the detailing or do the detailing there if they bring their stuff with them and then just bring it back to me. That, that sounds like a big win-win, but no, not here, Jeff. It's awful. I see my neighbors have this service where these car detailers like show up in a van and they do it in their driveway. 
Yeah, that happens around here. People show up in a van and might do it in your driveway, but they might like try to live there the entire time. Yeah, yeah. That. Obviously, don't have like maybe the premium equipment or or whatever to do it. But um, saying I feel like that's sort of a, a more common thing. That um, yeah, I, I used to get to... I used to get it done when I lived by you. I can't get it done here. Yeah, it sucks. Fair enough. You're not on the bridal path like Jeff. You're not able to get this sort of stuff done. Did Prince oh, ever sell his house on the bridal path? I bet you people who are members of that club, Jeffrey, live on the bridal path. Tim, it is like a three-minute walk from the bridal <laughs> It is probably a lot. I'm not one of those people. I can't walk there, um, and I don't live on the bridal path, Tim, besides Drake. Is there anything that you think that you would want? Like we sent you earlier, uh, you can buy a high-end air fryer right now on Amazon Prime, Tim, for $189. Well, I, I don't even know what I would use a high end one for. I mean, you, like, it's not clear to me what the difference between a high, other than having multiple baskets for different times. That I understand. That's what it has. Outside of that, that's, like, the, that's the like, high end one. <laughs> oh, like, I, I, I don't know. Still haven't been convinced fully on the air fryer. There's a still, we still have to pass a few more you're trials. You're full of shit. <laughs> I, yeah, we haven't done any meat Dude, yet. you're like, anyone watching you go. I don't even mean offensive. I'm sure the food is yummy. I'd eat three pogos, so I'm not insulting you when I say this, but the way your hand just keeps going back to the trays, you're not satisfied yet. You're like a dude who eats his whole whole meal at a restaurant and it says, waiter, come here, and then like has a complaint and is looking for some freebie. That's exactly it. He just wants, he's not sold. He thinks that if he decides to get an air fryer, that we won't make him food on the show anymore. We will continue to make you food, Tim. It's fine. I think it's a fun part of the show. That doesn't mean that you can't get an air fryer. I am still, it still has to pass a couple more what, seat what do you, trials. Do you really think that we're going to come in with, in the studio, like you are basically Howard Hughes when it comes to germs. You want us to bring raw chicken into the studio and make it in here for you and then serve it to you? That's what you want? Well, I mean, if you're taking it from the kitchen in the house to the studio, it's like 10 steps. I think it could be done. Yeah, but then you have to handle the, Paul will have to handle the raw chicken. There's nowhere to wash your hands in here. So then he'll probably end up having to flip it over with a tongue. Maybe he'll get some sal salmonella on it. Like it's far worse. Use a fork. Use it's, a fork. I, this, I, it really, it seems like your germ phobia really goes out the window when you really want something, huh? No, no, use a fork or a pair of tongs. Yeah, I understand that, Tim. He's handling raw chicken. It's not very sanitary to be doing it by where we also edit the show. And in a studio that hasn't been cleaned in two years. It's pretty dusty. Like, yeah. it's Like, what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, I mean, I know. I appreciate that those are all challenges. But we should overcome those challenges to continue to feed you on something? What? But so you... he can't overcome the challenge of making a phone call. <laughs> it's nothing to do with that. I just would like to see what meat looks like coming out of the air fryer. It's the last test. I just mean the hoops you want people to jump through for you, but the most simple elementary thing, you, you act like it's the biggest ask we've ever laid on you. I, I don't think that's what's going on here at all. Yeah. I've, I've said, I, I said every week, if Pat just, if I gave Pat my phone to dial the number and handed me the phone, I would do it. And also, Pat, I love how he wants, like, as you saw by the comments last week, people were really upset with Tim trying to cap shows. Tim thinks he's a program director from like sports talk radio and it's a schedule and we got to be off the air by a certain time because the next show is starting. He is admitted to defeat on that. I, I will take the L on that. I, I, the only reason I usually ever go into the comments is to see what you Jeff are fighting <laughs> about people with in the comments. But this time, cause I knew they were going to weigh in on this. I wanted to see what, and I look, it was resounding that you people are sick and you want this thing to be 14 hours long. And so, fair enough. I, I I have to admit defeat on that one. That's what you want. That, yeah, but it's that, also insulting to Pat, who does this content. Like Pat just wouldn't have us drone on. Like he. Yeah, but he doesn't have any other. He has no other shows that even approximate. Yeah, this but one. he has a he has a keen sense of when to a move it along and a show. He sure does. But at the same time, I just felt like we were being opulent and self indulgent. 
And I think we still were, were being self-indulgent to go over three hours for a football podcast. But if people want that, then fair enough. That's what, that's what they're interested in. I have to admit that's what they want. I also want to say to Jeff, I'm at 33,000 points right now. What? And Jesus I was Christ. At next, and Holy shit. I have won 10,000 free points, and I won another 10,000 free points at uh, wow. different polls. I'm up to 33,500 points, and I was at like 1,000 before this thing began. Okay, so in my opinion, Tim, and I'm sure you have... We're talking about McDonald's, Monopoly, po- and uh, app points, if you yeah, no, 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 but, but into what we were talking just about. Just getting inside baseball here, because I'm sure you've analyzed this. I believe on the reward system, the best bang for your buck is the 4,000 points for the fries and you can make those a large for no charge and you get your stickers. Yeah, this is what is it. Yes, I agree with you. I've now won enough points that I can get free extra value meals, all of which will have points other than the fries that you have to, which you have to upsize. That's an insane amount of points. It is an insane amount of points, but like, like I said, like, I don't I've even won- think the points bar at the top of the oh, page it goes it top- that high. It tops out at 14,000. So you are double what they expect, like even their heart, most hardened consumer to have. Absolutely. But like I said, I won 20,000. Uh, I'm sorry, I won 10,000 points. And then I either won five or 10,000 again, but I won a bunch of free points on polls. So, like, not only am I set almost everywhere. And when I set, I mean, I, if now that I can look at my digital game board here, which is so great, uh, I am set at every single color. Oh, no, I'm set at them all. I have two yellow, two red, two green, one blue, one brown, two light blue, two fuchsia, two orange. I'm set at, and I have three of the, the airports, which are the railroads. So- I am now set at all the various properties, and I've won a ton of points. It is now time, for, and and. I put in a lot of ballots on some of the good winners. So now we're down to the, you know, the the real hunt where all that's like the easy pickings have been done. The first week is about like collecting all the the easy properties to collect. Now it's the grueling hard work of rolling up your sleeves, working hard and finding (laughs) one of those diamonds in the rough. And breakfast is where the value is. Uh, Like that $8 for that bacon and egg McMuffin meal, A, it's by far probably the lowest calorie meal you're going to get that has stickers. B, it's the cheapest. Like, it is, like, I think a bacon and egg McMuffin meal with a black coffee is, like, 400 calories or something, 500 calories. Like, it's nothing. I- I'm sorry, what? it's a bacon and egg McMuffin? Yeah, bacon and egg McMuffin meal. So it comes with a hash brown and a black coffee. I think it's it can't be very much. It's probably like 500 Ooh, calories. You don't think that 500 calories is a lot for breakfast with two little things that you eat? Well, I have three things if you include the black coffee. You're not really eating the black coffee. The bacon and egg McMuffin has 325 calories in it. And didn't we, we looked last week at the hash brown. It's something like ungodly, isn't it? No, I don't think it is actually. Ash Brown nutrition is 160. So yeah, you're right around 500. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a that that is a that is that is a pittance compared to just about every other combo meal that you could choose to get to get uh, stickers for. I, I get, yes, if you're thinking about it in the parlance of getting stickers, maybe. But that's a lot of fat, man. There's a lot of saturated fat in that. Like not no all, doubt. not all calories are created equal here. It's you're like, right. No, no. It's I just like that. it's like my example of a banana versus five Doritos. Yeah. No, you're you're right about that. I I can see that point. Just saying, like if you're going for the lowest calorie amount, best bang for your buck, I think that's the sweet spot. Why wouldn't you just order like five coffees? Well, I just I you know my theory is that the best stuff is not going to be on the coffees. But do you have do you have probably, do you have any reason to believe that? They're the probably most purchased breakfast item with stickers every day at mcdonald's would be the coffee so i feel like the likely why don't you just buy five coffees and bring them to work and give them to your co-workers that's what i, well, said. No, I, I don't I, see, i'm what i'm saying is i think oh because the they won't McMuffins, give you their stickers no no no. well no it's not that i just think the the, the food products are where the best prizes are going to be I mean, not on the drinks do you think that they go through because i mean you watch mcmillions yes. that when it was rigged 
the game pieces weren't even in there. But you think that there is someone like a, a Mr. Monopoly, un rich, un rich Uncle Pennybags is in there being like, oh, no, 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 we can't put that elite piece on a coffee. It needs to go on a large fries or something like that. Pretty sure it's completely randomized. Because people talk, because people on the on Reddit board. Oh, you would think so it would be on a Big Mac because that's like the signature item of McDonald's. Uh, and so this is what, and, hold on. Did, did you just, did you just reference people on Reddit that you're talking to about <laughs> McDonald's Monopoly pieces and the theories that they have of where to find the good ones? Have these people won anything? Like, I'm not going to dignify that. Uh, in, like the, the 20 pack of nuggets. Like, I think that's who the winners are probably coming out of. Or the double Big Mac because it has a different box. Yeah, but 20 McNuggets have four stickers. That's more. It stickers does than have four stickers. Item. It does have four stickers, but it's a lot of that's a lot of McNuggets. Did Can you, I just say no, it's a I, lot of McNuggets did, did, in one sitting? Know, it's a lot of McNuggets. Did you know that? I mean, I didn't do it today because Paul's not here. Shout out Megan behind the camera, filling in for Paul today. Shout out to Paul. We're thinking about you, pal. And we have been going to McDonald's to get our coffees every morning. And just behind here, we've been saving all the stickers, not even looking at them and doing Aww, a break. Thank you. Well, I didn't say they're for you. Oh. But they're going to be a part of the show at some point with you here. We haven't looked at them yet. Just give me the chance to put them into my app first. No, 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 no. You'll get to see what that's they been are a too. lot of fun. Okay, that's that, been a lot of fun. That too, doesn't mean, yeah, but, I mean, you get to see what the stickers are. It doesn't mean that you get the stickers. Okay, because as Paul said, I, he, I, he doesn't want to win a truck and then have you just take it. Pat, you should cut off the barcode at the bottom of the sticker so he can't enter it. Don't do that. No, out. don't do that. Not only would you ruin the piece, that you need the le the numbers and the letters. How have you been doing, Jeff? Where are you at in the, in the contest? I went the other day, I got my kids some Happy Meals, and I couldn't resist buying food for myself because of stickers. So Yes, I know. <laughs> it's addictive. I want a $10 skip, um, like Uber Eats gift card. So I thought that was a win. You look at those sorts of things as a loss, though, because you just want, like, no, properties. No, that's not true. He was jealous about the guy who had some sort of like digital camera $20 gift certificate that he would never be able to figure out how to use. I just want to win all those things. 10,000 points? Like, there's no way there, there, there's any there's a higher point giveaway than 10,000 points. I can't imagine that. You have, I, I squealed. I'll admit it. I squealed <laughs> when I won the 10,000 point because it, it was so exciting. <laughs> and it came on a, on so a, wait, so hold, piece hold, hold on. It was so exciting. You got the 10,000 McDonald's points and that's good for what? Like two and a half medium fries. It's like most of the way to an extra value meal. Like that was a big p and like Jeff knows I don't like where when did the, you when squeal the, like in public? No, I was in my car. I couldn't wait. I was in my car. There's this back part of the parking lot near the McDonald's where I've been going, where I can quietly just zip back there where no one's bothering me. And there's a nice light overhead so that That's I can your ripping the, spot. Yeah, it's it's just a good spot. So I'm I've even got a lucky parking spot right now. A lucky parking there's probably spot. Probably like a dude who smokes yeah. back there. Yeah, there, there's there's a guy doing smoke. crack in the bushes and Tim's big <laughs> smile ripping his McDonald's pieces. <laughs> it just you know you know the thing is like it's been a lot of fun this year and I've I've been winning more this year. I've noticed I've won a lot of like point bonuses and I'm hoping to win one of the big prizes. I've got like how many ballots do I? I'll tell you right now. I'll go right into the system. I wonder how many ballots I have. In the oh, I don't have any prizes to claim, so I can't tell. But it's got to be like forty ballots and just one just, on just one of the things. How oh, I'll tell you right now. I have twenty four entries to one of the ballots. I have eleven into another one. I have ten into another one. I gotta ask. It's been a week. How many times have you been to McDonald's? It's a good question because I haven't gone at all the last couple of days because of Thanksgiving. I haven't been since Saturday morning. So, one, two, three, four. So, you went an insane amount last week. You were doing two you and You haven't been since Saturday until, until you... Saturday. Did you and do it? I have to ask, did you do a three a day at one point? No, 
No, well, I mean, what would define three a day? That you went to McDonald's three separate times to get something. Okay, yes. But <laughs> one of those times was just a coffee. Okay, but Pat, do you realize you also get bonus points on the app for, for making... Uh, yes. Like, it, it says if you go, like, four times this week, you get 500 bonus points. And he's going like, four times, three times in a day. The like, oh, like winning. The, I, I don't know what's a lower form of addiction. This or, like, legitimate the pulling of the three cherries, like, at the convenience store. But like hey. I said, I haven't gone. So today is Tuesday evening, and I have not darkened its door since Saturday morning. Okay, you, but, but, so, but somehow, so that means in four days you got like thirty thousand McDonald's points. Well, but again, I won free a lot of free points. Well, you got you got ten thousand in free points, and then I won another five thousand. I'm so pretty sure in free points. So you still have another twenty five thousand to make up. Yeah, something like that. Plus the bonus points, and I, I uh, yeah, something like that. But here's the thing, Pat, or I should say to Tim, how do I put this? Because you enter like every single thing onto the app, they realize what an excessive buyer you are and your preferred you, they could, their algo could almost be working against you now, knowing you're just like a mark. What do you mean? Like they would rather one of the elite pieces go to someone like me who might not even look at it and throw it out. Well, they don't have any control over what piece. Oh, like now the now they don't have any control. Prizes. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, which I is you're it? Well, they do. You're saying the double peel prizes could be fixed. There you go. Yeah, because your algorithm is showing them this guy's like here three times a day. We don't know how to grease him at I all. Am He's coming. So going when this podcast is over. By the way. I am so going. What are you going to get? Is it because you're jealous of Jeff's buffet? I mean, I am very jealous of Jeff's buffet. You can make your own buffet. Uh, Give us the, the, is there a prefix menu for your McDonald's buffet? This could be like an event that you hold in town. If we have enough people in the Halifax area who watch the show or listen to the show, we can do the very first annual Cust McDonald's buffet. And you give like us the menu. A Trump, uh, it's like a team won a national championship during the Trump administration. Yeah, no, absolutely. You got your, I think your your best burger, which is the quarter pounder with cheese. That's up there. Did you did uh, you so know? I read this, and it might not be true because it was on the internet, but I'm going to say it's true that at one point they tried to get rid of the quarter pounder. I think it was some point in the early '90s, and they made it into like a third pounder. But people didn't realize that a quarter pounder was less than a third. Yes. They thought a third was less. I than believe a that's that a big extra. That that is no, that I is believe. super sharp stuff there from people. No, I believe A and W came out with a third pound burger. Ah, okay, and it didn't sell as well because people thought the quarter pounder at McDonald's was bigger i believe that's what it was i hope it wasn't dr ben raza doctor of math who thought that <laughs> i there's all see they, they've even got some coops this year jeff on the to tempt you coops that are not sticker coops like right now they're offering the cheeseburger at 249 like usually i'd be all about that but no i can't touch it what are you talking about like right now on the app you can go get a cheeseburger for 249 but you get no stickers for that. None. So it's bad value is what you're saying. Well, just they're trying the cheeseburger to... regularly. Two I don't know. I don't like... buy I don't buy the cheeseburger. I don't know. Tim doesn't look that at the like Tim doesn't look at the prices. It's just, it's just like when he was telling us about the flyers at the supermarket. Where he's like, oh, their chicken's on special. And like it's not really on special. They just decided to put it on the front of the flyer. It could have been any price. And he's like, oh, it must be cheaper. It's on the flyer. Yeah, well, it's like I didn't know what a key cost, but now I do because it was cheap. Do you want to tell the people? Are you going to I, different locations? Yes. Like on purpose or that's yes. just where your day takes you? Both. Yes and. <laughs> so, Jeff, I don't know if you watched the Best Bet show last week, but no, it was during the DraftKings show that I got a text from Tim about he was getting keys cut and how cheap it was. Tim, how much the people need to know did you think that it co- cost to cut a key? Oh, my God. I had no idea what it would cost. So the backstory was I'm getting a key cut for my grandmother. She needed some keys cut for her garage. And I said to her, okay, I'll do that. She said, I'll pay you when I get back. And I said, how much are they? She said, they're probably $20 to $30 a piece. What? So I was like, oh, okay. So I was prepared to spend $20, 30 bucks. 
to get a cut. So I went to home hardware to get it done. And they're like, yeah, it'll be like $4 and 15 cents or something. And I was like, what? And I had to congratulate them on their very low prices. I said, thank you. This is very inexpensive. Thank you. That's I'll be $4 coming back. Is more than I would have guessed. Two that, keys that's a, two that, keys? Is, that is exactly what I said, Jen. I was like, that sounds high. <laughs> so then when I gave her the keys, she like had her wallet out and was ready to give me a bunch of cash. I was like, no, no, only $4 and 15 cents. So as a thank you, she gave me a meat thermometer. <laughs> What? Why is that funny? <laughs> One of the most random things I've ever heard. <laughs> She's like, here, I got this for you then instead. And just this meat thermometer. Like, if the keys were actually what she thought they cost, she wouldn't have given you the meat thermometer. No, she would have given me the cash. What are you going to do with the meat thermometer? I cook roasts. D do you? <laughs> I do actually. When was the last time you cooked a roast with your meat thermometer? In the well, not with a meat thermometer, but in the You're spring, I cook it in the bath, aren't you? No, but I have been trying out the temperatures and different things. <laughs> like I wanted to see how hot my coffee was the other day, so I put the meat thermometer in there. <laughs> anyway, I was experimenting, but I do like make roast beefs or porks or whatever, and or chickens in my roaster and in the oven. So it would be convenient to know what the internal temperature was. I would assume so. I, 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 was... I, I don't know how you were cooking these things without doing that in the first place. Well, I would just, I was calling up my grandmother and asking her, how long should I bake a roast pork for? And then writing it down. So just pure timing. So, but we know that you don't like to heat up the oven first. You just put stuff in the oven. No, well, no, you got to pre, I appreciate it. You can't just broil these things or pre, you got to preheat it. Yo, so you do that now. You don't just broil everything. Not everything. No, I still broil some stuff, but not everything. What are you broiling these days? Like if I have, if I feel like being fancy, I'll take a little wedge of brie and I'll broil it with some honey. <laughs> you're, you're killing poor Megan by the camera. What? <laughs> what? She's, she's never heard, know. she's never heard you before. Oh, okay. I'm, so, I'm sorry. This is how you. I'm not sorry. This is how I live my life. I, I, I buy. I'll buy brie when it's on sale, and I'll cut it into like quarters, and then I'll put it on a uh, cookie sheet with some tin foil, and then I'll put it in the oven, hit the broil, and then throw some honey on top of the cheese and let it melt. And then I dip it with some of those healthy pretzels that you can buy. If you didn't know, if I'm, if I'm feeling fancy, Me Megan, if you, the microphone's there. You can turn yourself on for this one. Um, if you weren't staring at a picture of Tim and knowing how old he was, how old would you have guessed he was if you just heard him talk? Hello. It's. Um, I don't want to offend him. No, you, you can't. Like, You're not going to offend me. Like it's perfectly okay. Oh, really? Then see, that's very generous. And most oh. people say like eighty. <laughs> I wouldn't say 80, but I'd say, like, older than he probably is. That's fair. But not substantially older. So, Tim, you're, you're getting one in the win column for this, I think. Thank you. I feel good about that. I, thank you very much. I mean, Jeff, Jeff clearly didn't watch the live show because Ben Raza had never heard the pie story. And Pat was no, trying to I, make heard, I watched. I watched. And you did a. You did a very unauthentic job in giving him the well, story. Well, I wasn't there. I wasn't there to rehearse the pie story. You didn't mention that you hid in in aisles. It wasn't relevant. That you were peeking around corners to make I sure. Want to I, you're right. You're right. But I want to return to the brie and why that's so funny. Why is it so funny that I heat up some brie and throw a little bit of honey on it to be fancy? Okay. I was just laughing. Like when Tim, when you asked what was so funny the first time. Pat said it was just truly the randomness of the gift. It all got me. And as you kept talking, I just kept laughing. But it was okay. the, the randomness of all of it is what got me. I don't know whether I would have got the meat thermometer or not if it had been the price she thought. I bet you An I would. An early Christmas gift. It would have probably been given to me a different time for a different task. So it's like a real butterfly, butterfly effect moment for your life, getting that meat thermometer. I, so I don't, in I the don't. same way you keep some Subway gift cards at the door, your your grandmother has the most random gifts. Yes. Oh yeah. She'll find she'll buy things that are of no use to her and she'll just give them to me at times. Why would they be of use to you then? I don't know. 
I'll take him. But, 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 like the meat thermometer has a very practical use for you now that you're you know a master chef. But like, what are some oh, other? Say that. What are some other things that she just randomly gives you, and what do you do with them? I got a paperweight once. What would you do with a paperweight? Put my papers under it. You got a lot of papers, do you? Not a whole lot, but en know, en en just en enough. Are you like Wayne in Wayne's World? Just like, what am I going to do with a gun rack? I don't even own a gun, let alone I many guns that would necessitate an entire rack. Do you have tons I of paper double that would necessitate an entire paperweight? I, I use it occasionally. She gave me a bunch of double A batteries once because she didn't have any that took double A. She meant to buy triple A's. No. I don't have anything to take double A's either, but I mean, if I did, they'd be useful. <laughs> All so right. whatever. All right. I, it's funny because I this is not the topic that I thought you were going to go with with Cus, Cus Corner. We kind of got off off on one here. That was good. I liked that. Uh, we'll talk about trackpads versus mice next week, I suppose. Oh, I forgot all about that. We will talk about well, that. People yeah. who use mice don't know what they're, they're anyway. They, they might as well go back to 1989 when people used mice with computers. <laughs> but we'll leave that for next week. So you can stew on that one and think about that audience out there. Cuss corner. <laughs> okay. So we teased it last week, and I want to talk about it this week. I didn't realize that it was still 1992 and that everybody was using computer mouse, uh, computer mouse still. I don't understand why anybody basically would ever use a computer mouse. Track pads that you can touch with your fingers are so much more user-friendly, intuitive. Uh, they're so much easier to use than a mouse, which is separate and apart from the device that you're using. I mean, there may be carpool reasons why people use would use a spe special type of mouse. I totally understand that. But for your average person who isn't suffering from any, any condition, the little button in the middle of your laptop, keyboard, or the trackpad are a thousand times superior to using a mouse. I mean, I, I, those people who love to use their computer mouse probably have to pull the perforated holes off the side of their printer paper, too, after they print something out, or uh, have to make sure that the actual rubber balls in their mouse don't go missing or something, because that's essentially the way they're living in technology. I wonder if their fax machine has a mouse, too, that they use. Computer people are going to be so triggered by this take. Do you think that the mouses today have the ball in them? No, I know that they don't. I'm making a joke. I'm being hyperbolic to note that it's so old timey to be using a computer mouse in the year of our Lord 2023 that uh, that, that that it seems like we're living like 1992 or something. So here's the deal uh, for me. Those people won't hear this, uh, Pat, because they only have dial up Internet, so they're not going to be able to download this podcast. I like that. Here we go. You get getting fiery about this. Uh, you're completely wrong, for one thing. Uh, this we know, and people watching know that as well. Uh, I'll use my trackpad when I'm on my laptop, but that's not what you're talking about. And that's not where this initial discussion came up. <clears throat> it's when you have like multiple monitors going at the same time. That <clears throat> if you can sit back, like you use the convenience, and some people use a mouse on their laptop. I am not one of those people. Now I have ice in my throat too, so I will clear that up. <coughs> Whoa! Don't know what happened there. But when you're sitting at your laptop, it's pretty easy to use the trackpad right in front of you. You're looking at your laptop. However, when I'm at home, I will project my laptop up onto my TV, and I have my wireless keyboard and wireless mouse around just because it's much more easy to navigate in that fashion. It would make no sense. As you were talking about, you have two screens up at work and your laptop, and you do everything off your laptop. That's crazy. I type. I type. I scroll. I do everything because the trackpad is so much more user-friendly than a big, bulky mouse. But it's not. Who wants that? But it's not. Like, Paul, do, do you wish you were using your laptop trackpad right now to switch the show? No. <laughs> no, not Then what all. they should create are computer trackpads then for, for desktops or something. They have those. Or, you know, they they they, 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 screen, they made they made, those, they made those a while ago. Uh, they, they were like a little... Like lift off, they had them for Apple, and they they stopped making them because no one wanted to use them. Okay, fair enough. I you you you, you don't realize how big of a minority you're in with this take. I mean, I there are a lot of older people who are very hide bound to the technology that they learned in elementary school and won't give it up. I but appreciate it's, but it's that. but it's more convenient. 
to use the Why? mouse. Why? They, they can't use their trackpad to download songs onto their iPod Touch? Yeah, but I, I don't... Do you find that difficult? I, I, but I, what I don't understand is you're working... Uh, you, how would you be able to see the laptop and the screens at the same time? They're open. The laptop screen is open. Yeah, I get that, but it's it, essentially having three but, screens. But why, but why do you have your laptop screen like right here in front of you to use everything, and then screens up here at the same time? Like, it's what, just the way I work. Maybe you're the one who doesn't work properly. No, it's the way I work, and I don't like using a big, bulky, awkward, out of date mouse. I would rather use my hands, which are far more tactile and efficient. It's also really I don't, hard. I don't understand it. Yeah, it's really, I don't understand your take on this either, because I find it very hard when I have two monitors going, or three monitors going at the same time. I find it hard to get from one screen to another with the trackpad. It's just so much easier with a mouse, and I can sit however I oh, want. Oh, no, somebody showed me how you do that. See, there's this thing called settings in the display, mm -hmm. and you can change which screen is your one and your two and your three. Yeah. And so that all, although they're physically different screens, they all operate as if they were like one large continuous screen screen it's very neat you should check that out dude are you are you serious yes yeah, so like it i, I it, it's really it, easy to do it that way yeah we know you tim, do it to tim we, we we know that's the case but what i'm saying Seven. is that Good. yeah you didn't know that was a thing i learned it a while ago actually not it wasn't yesterday like i learned but it you're, but you're giving ago, me that advice like i'm knows. some like you're giving me that advice well, like it sounded like I, you didn't know if you're having no, trouble I, moving from screen to screen it's effortless <laughs> it's effortless it's not effortless screen. if you're at the large if you're at the left side of screen one you need to do something on screen three it's you have to like do it a whole the thing is you have to go like oh one. my goodness you might have to swipe your finger yeah you know twice. what you don't have to do with the mouse that you just go like this no it said you have to drag no, you don't. your what do you mean do you, you how do you use a mouse like with like your entire arm well yeah you do you don't just hold it in one single place you got to move it no you basically don't you got to move the mouse no you don't you just go like that Use your wrist, not like the top. Oh, my God. You're just like pointing down with your finger and going like this? You're going to break your you wrist. You know how I'm pointing. You can't see me. No, I'm saying that's how you would have to do it. It's the only way that you can do it. I used to have one of those mouse pads that had that rubber cushion thing built so, into it. So you, ha you haven't used a ma mouse in like 15 years. Since you bought a laptop, you haven't used a mouse. Probably. No, I used to use one at work for a while, but no, I don't anymore. I don't know. People who are professionals, especially people who work in computers, I, you're going to hear from them. Is all I'm saying because they're right. Well, and and am I? Yeah, you when are. When are they going to mail their letters in so that I'll uh, know that they're coming? Will it come by steamship or will it come by uh, telegram? I just want to make sure I'm ready for when they send their very frustrated message to me about how they love their computer mouse. Honest to goodness, <laughs> you've killed poor Jeff. No, it's 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 you've killed poor well, Jeff. It's, just, it's it's a rare instance where I know I'm ahead of the curve on technology <laughs> on this, and these poor people are are clinging to yesterday's technology and trying to pretend like it's like the wave of the future when, uh, you know, the revolution has come and gone. It's all trackpads going forward or touchscreens. The days of the mouse. So the having something external to your computer to use your computer seems so outlandishly old timey. You don't have a custom setup, do you? You still have a, like you a, still have like, a tower uh, to connect your computer to, too, and, uh, you know. So, Tim has never, so Jeff, Tim has never, like, put, like, projected stuff up on screens and, like, sat on his couch, hung back with, like, a keyboard next to him and a mouse and just, like, laid on his couch and scrolled. And that's, like, the better way to do it. He's, like, hunched over at a laptop, which for some, I, I really don't understand the point of having the external monitors and your laptop going at the same time. Why wouldn't you just project that on? I like to see one? things. No, I like to have the the two monitors going and the third monitor going. What do you do? You need all three of those? Not always, but there are days where I want something over here on the left, and then I want something I'm working on on the right. Instead of having to open and close different windows, that it's all yeah, in front of me. Yeah, but so you're using two. But what what are you using the third for? For my email and messages and stuff like that. I I want those on clean screens, so I don't have to like minimize what I've got open on my screens. I can just instantly see them. Oh my God, man. Like you... I love that you think you are like <laughs> one upping tech guys. Let me put this in terms you might well, put put tech guys in quotes. No, no. Let me let me put this in terms you would understand. This would be like you walking into your boy uh you know Chef Boy RD's kitchen and telling him how to cook his raviolis. <laughs> 
well, it would be like that if I if if I knew that the whole world stopped cooking ravioli the way he did, because the way he did it was old timey and out of date, and there were a bunch of other people doing something a lot more efficient and better, and I was letting him know that you know, people don't do the ravioli efficient. like but, that. But anymore. okay, I, I have to ask. So Jeff is obviously agreeing with me, and everyone else that you've talked to agrees against you with this. You're the only person that holds this opinion, yet you're firmly in belief you're correct. I, I know I'm correct. Yeah, but he's he's telling people who he's living have his like truth. The four screen, multi screen experience that he's never once even used how they should be using it better. I've used mice in the past in those instances. I find it to be extremely cumbersome. Yeah, because you're probably you when you move the the tracer from one screen to the other, you probably lose it. <laughs> yeah, I, that has you're happened. Like, you spend, you're lost. <laughs> you know what is a lot easier when you're trying to like enlarge or shrink the size of uh, you know windows using your fingers on the trackpad. A lot more easy to maneuver than a mouse. It's just a precision thing. A mouse is too blunt of a tool for the work you're trying to do. Oh my god! I understand Listen. why you needed them back in 1987. This is just a but now we have the technology. This, this is just crazy. Uh, Paul, did, I saw you had your hand raised a minute ago. Do you, do you want to chime in on this? Tim's pretty backward. <laughs> like, I mean, Tim, the, the the tasks that you do on your computer on a day to day basis. I don't know exactly what you're up to. I imagine it's writing emails, very very basic basic things that you probably don't even need a computer at all. You could probably just like most olds, just have an iPad and uh, and and use that. Um, uh, yeah, like you've been to this studio a million times. It's like none of this yeah. would work on your laptop. Like it would just. There's no laptop on the market that would take this number of connections and and not completely like go belly up. And, and when you talk about precision, we do a lot of editing on our computer. Something that takes a lot of precision on the screen in order to do to get to the right spots to highlight the right things to increase the volume decrease the volume zoom in and look very close at something you couldn't really do that i've tried to edit on my laptop before it's not as precise on a laptop with the trackpad versus having a mouse which is very precise of where you need to go to and it will stop because your finger is not swiping across it what, 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 what would you, what, what would you hold, hold on what what would you say is the most precision based thing that you do with your computer. Hmm. Is it closing a window? Is that it? It's probably expanding and contracting the size of windows. <laughs> it's probably the most precision thing I do. Or like playing around in Excel. Oh, did like wrapping and unwrapping things. I learned how to wrap text. <laughs> you learned how to... when, like when did you learn how to wrap text? recently and how long have you used excel for 15 years and you're giving advice on technology well I, I, that's why i think i'm such a it's such a rare instance that i can't let it pass by that you've got people who are living like it's 1993 out there and then you got me who's like driving in the fast lane to the future <laughs> <laughs> but no go ahead enjoy your mouse enjoy double physically having to double click a foreign device to your computer having something you have to plug in or bluetooth somehow to your computer go ahead and enjoy that join the fact that you're going to follow this up next week with something that along the lines of raisins are the best <laughs> and yellow starburst rock well next week is of course our last full show before thank or for before halloween i will note jeffrey that i was at the grocery store on oh no Saturday. hold on next week will not be the halloween show we have a show coming out on halloween Tuesday, That's true, but then won't it, won't, but, uh, won't, won't it be dated immediately because Halloween will be over by the time the show comes out? No, it's a, it's a Halloween but, show. No, but how <laughs> your candy okay. rankings, like it'll be fresh. The dads will just be eating the candy as you're ranking them. All right, fair enough. I will say. Well, you're ranking what, them poorly, I might What have. I wanted to put on my the, 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 uh, the, the radar is that for the first time in a while, I saw packs of full-sized candy bars available for sale at the grocery store they cut down on the am talking but they, about but they cut down on the amount of them they actually sell like the packs of them now like five packs and stuff like that for just for halloween give out the full bars people if you can hold on a second good. you've never like you've never seen full-size candy bar like a four pack 
being outside sold. of Costco? No, I never noticed it at the grocery store before. Dude. Outside of Costco, yeah, that, 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 that's, bad, that, that, that's a bad take. They're around all the time. Okay, all right. Well, then if they're around, then I'm wrong about that. I just no, noticed. They've it, always. They have always. You could buy a four okay. pack. Okay. Like, I've never seen that. Like, Jeff has them. I Jeff has a whole barrel of them next to him. I don't want to like fat guy embarrass myself right now. Are we going to pull out some I arrow a bars? Pack of coffee crisp and Kit Kat chunky here. Like these okay. are just standard four packs from a grocery store, not Halloween edition. All right. So I withdraw that comment then because I did not know those existed. So, in a, so in a time of increased inflation, Elite more, pover- number one more poverty than ever, your economy. advice is people need to spend up on Halloween to give out chocolate. It's for the kids. They 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 like the they prefer the full size candy rather Have than the Have you minutes. ever bought and given anything out? Never. I, never at my it. building, I turn candy into the front of my building. Full, full size chocolate in? bars. Well, they won't know they got it. No. Oh! <laughs> oh wow! Wow! If they don't know it's from you, then it doesn't matter what you get. Oh. <laughs> So if he doesn't get that. credit, I didn't then, say that. Then fuck I didn't them kids. say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. I stopped mid sentence. You don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> now it is all revealed, huh? <laughs> no, it's all about the children having a happy Halloween. That's what it's all about. And credit for Who you, you think from said children. The full size. I you just think- don't want somebody who didn't give the full bar getting credit for a full Dude, bar. Okay, you exposed yourself there on a couple fronts, <laughs> and I kind of agree with you. Like, <laughs> if I'm not going to see the look in the kid's yes, eyes, exactly. I'm dropping a full a full size into his bag. But hold on, do, what's do, do you do you think it's all about the kids, Jeff? Because that's what Tim said. It's all about the kids. So what's it matter? No, what happens? It's to you not guys? all about the kids. And here's where I'm here just to tell me so insane in that respect because. Guess where that full size is going? It's going to dad. Okay. I don't think that's true. I don't think a dad would take the full size bar out of the kid's bag. No, with the kid knowing that the full size bar is there. Yeah. Or Jeff, the Jeff, 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 you're not thinking about all the people out there. Like, think about people like me who grew up without a dad at the house where I would go Halloween. Wouldn't you? I still have it. Wouldn't, dad, the, he wasn't wouldn't the savvier mood move, Paul? Or sorry, Jeff, be to like take five Mr. Bigs, little mini ones, rather than the one full size. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Um, no. Yeah. Listen, full size is a boss move, but it seems totally unnecessary, and I don't think the parents appreciate it. I can tell you that I do not appreciate it for the age my kids are right now, because it's just too much candy. It's too much chocolate. Like. I wish there was a place that we could go to dump out 95% of their candy and give it to someone else towards the end of it because we just have Tim's, too much candy. Right now. Yeah, give it to Tim. Yeah, but he'll be triggered that it's not a full size candy bar. I, I stand I by mean, what I stand I'm by. I'm sure you if should. you brought it to like your football Sunday hang, it wouldn't last long. I'm but. pretty sure well, I could be wrong about this. But, but, but most friends of our friend of the show, Bronstetter, is a full chocolate bar guy. Really, yeah, he's a mensch. Yeah, he's a top, yeah. he's Bronstetter? a top gent like that. I mean, J- J- I think Aaron Bronstetter goes to the Jeff Feinberg School of five thousand dollar a plate dinners. Tim, <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. he doesn't. No, he does. How no, dare you assume that Aaron is in the same league no, as me? Hold on. I'm not trying to put myself up and put him down. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to put both of us down. Like I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I am. I mean that to bring to bring this all down together. I didn't mean that. I just meant like let's. That rhetoric is 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 I- incorrect. Well, I, I we were Tim and I were discussing. Uh, can I? You know what? Wait, no, t- hold on. T- like, Tim, t- I will call the host, and I, I'll. <laughs> Tim's afraid to put people on speaker. I will call the host and ask how much it was a plate. Well, see, that's the thing. That's what that's the conclusion that I ended up drawing from all of this is that you yes. were since you were a guest, you don't actually know how much it cost. Yeah, I yeah. don't, but I've gone for brunches there before buffets where it's like it's nice. It's well, it's expensive. Like it wasn't cheap. It was a nice dinner, but it wasn't like political fundraiser, a plate type type sort of. Um, yeah, but it's more fun. To th- it's more fun to think that it's ten thousand dollars. Yeah, I know. And I saw your tweet last night. Four thousand dollar <laughs> bong loads. <laughs> I see. I- <laughs> 
<laughs> no, yeah, no. Bronstetter, yeah, he's full chocolate. Listen, dude gives out full chocolate bars. You can take for take that to mean what you will. Um, but yeah, I would. He just believes in giving like... people a happy Halloween. That's what he believes in. Paul. So I'm the only person who actually gives full chocolate bars. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I that's like... a great service that you do. T- Tim wishes he could take credit for doing that, yeah, he... although he has the ability to do it. He's been telling. But yeah, who would know? So why all do this it? time? He's been telling people to do it, and he didn't actually. He didn't actually put his money where his mouth is. I, Shocker. Well, I can't. I don't Shocker. have a house. Uh, but I you don't still live in a house when people come to the door. Yeah, but you give candy to the concierge who gives it out to the kids. Why not? Who cares what ha- if you get? How credit- would that work? I wonder though, because like you know, you have a limited number. Then you're not treating all people equally. First come, first serve. You know, everyone. Is it? Yeah, and I mean that's how it works. That's how it works on every house at Halloween. Okay, so. if it's first come to first serve, which ones go first? Probably. So why don't you just hang out full size or, or not to the kids? And if the full size go first, if it's first come first serve, doesn't that indicate that the full size are indeed the best ones? Why don't you hang out in the lobby for an hour on Halloween and give give full size? I will be to the recording kids. a show with you two next Halloween or on Halloween night. You, there'll and, still be plenty of time no, for you. By to the time talk. we wrap up, yeah, it'll be seven o'clock. Oh, are you going to take the stairs down? No, no by the time we wrap up at seven o'clock, most Halloween candy trick or treating is over by seven o'clock. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, it's are, dark. What, it's kind of over what, by what are, then. What are you talking about? Yes, when I was young, I went out at like five o'clock. <laughs> five o'clock. 15. I went out early. I bring and, uh, we five... bring our four and three year old out at six thirty. They're the early ones. Oh no! It was I would the light say out when I like young. Tim, like no anything five o'clock. Anything before nine o'clock is like you're crazy to think that is not like fully in play trick or treating. Yeah, we and get even nine o'clock. We get if people knocked on my door get... at eight forty five. I'd be terrified to open the door. <laughs> No, I would go up until like not. Eh, I'd be annoyed. You would be, it, it dies down a if bit. On it, Hall- like a rush. Hey, hold on. If on Halloween someone knocked on your door at 8.45 <laughs> p.m., you would be terrified to open your door? I would close my, I would turn my lights off and look through the curtains to see who it was. I'd be afraid. Tim. But Pat, you have to realize this is a guy who doesn't get deliveries, who doesn't get Amazon. No one is knocking on that door unannounced unless they are soliciting Tim for uh for a vote or something. That's true. My wife had her college phone her at 954 last night to donate money. Wow. 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 She That's unbelievable. She she didn't give the money. I would have lost my mind. It was shot. Like it was she. Like we couldn't even be mad. It was just shocking. Yeah, it's like, do you know what time it is? And it would be one like, thing it's like, different if you went to college in like yes. Vancouver, or if we were, and they were, or if we were somewhere else, and the time zones didn't correct. match. But we literally are like twenty minutes away from the campus. <laughs> Outrageous to call at that time of day. It's crazy, craziness. Imagine, <laughs> yeah, college is trying to get money from you. Please, I gave you my fucking money. It wasn't worth it. it. wasn't worth it the first time. What do you need more for? Good God. Uh, anything else, Cuss Corner-wise, or are we good till next week? I think we're good till next week. Can we do Should t- I tell you what I, my Halloween costume is going to be? Oh, yeah. I'd like to know it. Is it Psy Gangnam style? No. It, <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, it'll probably make you guys laugh because it's like really weird and random and it'll mean nothing to you, but to my friends it'll be an inside joke and the best I, costumes that nobody gets. No, if you're going to a house party with your friends that your yeah, buddy is different. throwing from yeah, that crew, different. listen, the number one when you're going to a if you're going to like a true general population Halloween party, you don't want to play in the callback genre. But if you are Halloween partying with your friends, the number one genre to costume out of is the callback genre. And by callback, I mean anything that your friends would know instantly and a memory for the group you are with would be hysterical. On that note, and it's not even worth explaining, but I'm going as a chicken ball, Tim. A chicken ball. A chicken like, ball. That's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, the story would make no sense here. Wouldn't even make you guys laugh. It'd probably make you think I'm weirder than I am, but 
I've got like one of these. I bought one of these like ultra cheap bumper balls. You know what those are? Yep. No. You They're like need, you don't I, need I to explain. Don't it. To you, explain you just, you just move on with the story. Yeah, that's all. And then you know, like the paper where like a, a kid will like sketch himself in kindergarten. Yeah, wrapping it up. That's just a chicken ball. There, that's my costume. I know. That's all. Do you have your costume? That's, too? A, that's a great story, Mister Meredith. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I said I was going to go as something. Now I completely forgot what it was, which is unfortunate. I don't know. Someone remind. I still think me. I should go as Paul Bearer. You kind of look like That'd Paul. You know who you. else you look like? You look like the guy uh, from the Goonies. The, hey, you guys. With, oh, my God. You kind of look like that guy. Like, not like look, look I, like him, I but you can pass the baseball him. camp, the counselor said I look like that guy. I mean, you should just go as Lord of the Rings guy every year. Or Rudy. Samwell Ganji. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's. Okay, nerd. Yeah. Fuck right off with your Lord of the Rings. Get a life. Sorry, Mr. Patrick. <laughs> You should have just let Sauron have the ring. Hate those fucking movies. Hate those fucking books. Hate those fucking movies. The worst. Ugh. Did you watch that TV show that they had, Tim? I heard that was terrible. The animated television show? No, the one that cost like $3 billion that came out last year. Oh, On Amazon. God, no. No, I didn't. No, I don't have the Amazon. No. Experience. Experience. <laughs>